Welcome to Twisted Tragedies, where we follow all the twists and turns wherever they lead. I'm your fearless leader, Elise. And tonight we are going to do a few things, but we're going to start with the Sandra Birchmore story. And we have a special guest. Mizzy's here. She runs Sandra's page, um, the Justice for Sandra Birchmore page on Facebook. And we're going to go through the story again, because it needs to be gone through again and again and again and again and again. So I have a little slides. I have slides here. So, you know, let's put San poor Sandra up here for a second. What a beautiful girl. Like, you know, Sandra was 23 and pregnant. And probably Melissa knows this story better than anyone. So why don't you tell them? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me tonight, Elise. Um, so when Sandra was about 13, well, let's actually start a little bit earlier. Sandra was born in Boston. She grew up in Stoughton, Massachusetts. Um, her mom was a single parent and she never knew her dad. And then, um, you know, when she was about 13, she wanted to be a police officer. So she joined the Stoughton Police Department's um, Explorers Program, which was run by Robert Devine of the Stoughton Police um, uh, PD. He was, he grew up in, so high in the Stoughton PD that he was the deputy. They created this position for him as the deputy, as the deputy. But when he started the program, he was a school resource officer. He also ran the after school program for the school. It was basically a gym time where kids after school could go play in the gym. And then he became the leader of the Stoughton's Police Explorers program. Um, enter the Farwells, when they were in high school, they were in the first class of the Stoughton um, Police Explorers program. In the program, they were kind of like the cool kids. They hung out a lot of times at the junior high because their fellow classmates didn't like them. They were weird. A lot of them said they were fucking assholes, that they were pieces of shit. Some, um, a guy told me that they didn't even know if they had friends besides each other. Um, so they were outcasts among their peers. So they hung out with a lot of the junior high kids and they used to go to the after school program for the junior high students. So fast forward to when Sandra was about 13, she joined the program and Matthew and his twin brother, William, they used to come in and be guest instructors because they were um, in the military as bomb techs and they were also police officers, but they weren't in Stoughton yet. And so they would come in and show the bomb tech stuff and Again, they seemed like the cool guys. They both ended up becoming Stoughton police officers. And when Sandra was 13, in this program, they started grooming her. Robert Devine, Matthew, and William Farwell. And yes, they are twin brothers. And then when Sandra was 15, Matthew Farwell began sexually abusing her. And that relationship lasted until the day she died when she was 23. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to go into the night of her when they found when she was. I do, because it's just so, sus first of all, it's suspicious. And yes, you guys, I'm higher up because I have a pillow under my butt because this chair is uncomfortable. God damn it. I love this chair, but it's so freaking uncomfortable. Um, I do, because literally, wait, Divine's wife was a cop, but. Quincy yes. High. I'm sorry, She's I went to Quincy school. High. So <laughs> I went to Quincy High. So I've never, that's something new that I didn't know. Um, what year did she graduate? Does anybody know? I don't know much about his wife. I haven't looked into her yet much, okay. but she is a police officer. I believe she's still a police officer in uh, one of the neighboring towns. Oh, so Quincy. She's a cop. Yeah, Quincy. I believe Quincy. Interesting. I could probably find out a lot of information about that if she's in Quincy. So yes. that's that, that's quite interesting. Yes. Um, I mean, yeah, these, you know, these three here, 
<laughs> these these uh specimens no here. actually that one of them is the one on the very far end is robert heel i mean okay. the um Wait, we got another one that's robert divine that's divine him. yeah yeah and the one i sent you of matthew farwell he was in a, a police outfit he was in right there that's that's matthew yep. farwell Oh yeah, he looks like a champ, huh? Like, yeah. <laughs> who was the Abington cop? It's a good question, Liz. That they was haven't told us. Okay, all right. That yeah. So I, I mean, they're all creeps. Number one, Divine. Yeah. I heard was an even bigger creep. You know, there was a lot of other things wrong with him. He was demoted, as I remember, right? Yes, because he he was cheating on his wife with a young woman, and he was making it look like she was stalking him and they went to they he made it so they would basically go into her house and they pulled all the electronics and they ruined her life you know he ruined mm. her life because he was having an affair with her and he didn't want that getting out and that's why he was demoted no he should have been fired see that's yeah. the thing you guys demoted him instead of firing him exactly. instead of doing the correct thing, which is if anyone else did that, you would have been charged. Bottom line, because Definitely. you carry a badge and a gun does not mean that you should not be charged if you commit a crime. And that's the problem that we seem to have here is that they never want to do anything. It's paid administrative leave and, you know, oh, they can, you know, they can't work at this department, but they can easily just Go find one in another city, town, state. Like, exactly. it doesn't matter. Like, and just go somewhere else, which is not cool. Like, not we need all. to hold them just as accountable as we hold everyone else on planet Earth. And, like, I remember as a kid being able to, like, see your local cop and know exactly who your local cop in your neighborhood was. We knew exactly who he was. And, and you know, you'd say hi. They'd know all the families in the neighborhood. That doesn't happen anymore. They don't even get out of their cars anymore. Like, so, I mean... This whole, I mean, you have to think about it. it. works like a mob, basically. It's, I am the law, so why would I have to follow the law? And that's half the problem that we have because then they get in trouble and nothing happens, right? Like, they get swept under the rug. Or if they do really get caught and it's in public, it's paid administrative leave until they, you know, say no charges are going to be filed. And it's like, yep. if that was me or anyone else, those charges would be filed. Like, bottom exactly. line. I mean, but yeah, let's go through the, the, the day and the day before and the night of everything that happened when Sandra died. Okay, on February 1st, 2021, um, say say right before she, what was going on, around 8.50, she was texting with her cousin. She in initiated the text. She was asking her, her cousin was going through something. So she texted her cousin, her cousin to see if she was okay. And um, then she was also Snapchatting with a coworker because there was a major snow snowstorm in Massachusetts that night. It was basically a blizzard and she was texting with the coworker because she worked in a school and she needed to know whether or not they were going to have school the next day or was it going to be delayed? So they were Snapchatting back and forth and the last texts and the last Snapchats went unanswered from Sandra's end. So we know she stopped communicating with outside of her home was nine o'clock with anybody else besides um, Matthew Farwell when he showed up at her house at 9.14. Yeah. He went into her apartment very, very strangely with his head down, a mask on and his hood up to conceal his identity. And then about 29 minutes later, this is him walk. If you look at that picture, coming out. when he's coming into her apartment, most people don't walk in an apartment building like that to conceal. No, you walk out like that. Either. You already have the hood on. You already have the mask on. Like it would take me until I got outside probably to put any of that on or right at the door when I'm about to go out. Yeah. And when you walk in, usually when you walk into a building, because usually you get blasted with heat, you take your, your hood off. Yep. And no, he had his head down, so he was concealing his face. He knew he was a big guy, so that would give him away. But if he concealed his face, but he was dumb. He wore a uh, military sweatshirt underneath his coat, 
And that's one of the reasons why they figured out exactly who he was. Who he was. Right. So he left about 29 minutes later and nobody heard from Sandra after that. Right. Um, her work got concerned because she didn't show up to work for three days. And so they called, they asked their um, SRO officer to figure out what they could do. He called over to, first he called uh, Stoughton because that's where they thought she still lived. And then they, they he called the Canton um, SRO officer in Officer Kutar, Officer Brady and Officer um, Yeaton went to her apartment to see if they could do a welfare check. They got to her apartment and there was no answer at the door. So Sergeant Lank, who a lot mm. of you guys know that name from another <laughs> case, um, they told he told them to go out to check her car to see if her car was there. They went out and checked her car and her car had not been cleaned off from Monday night. So they knew that she hadn't gone anywhere where in her vehicle since the major storm that they had that was from Monday night into Tuesday. Right. So they went and got the key from the management office and they went into her apartment. They say it was um, very messy, but I find a lot of times when officers say it's messy, it's not, they mean cluttered. Like right. my, if you look, if I scan my room, my room right now, my room, my room is cluttered. I have stuff on my table. I have stuff on, you know, oh, yeah. welcome to the club. It's what happens yeah. when you live in an apartment and not a house and you have no storage. <laughs> see, I have, I have a house. It's just, I'm, I'm a messy person, but my, <laughs> I, I vacuum my rug all the time because I have, I have a dog that, that sheds a lot, you know? Yep. So it's like, they say, I find a lot of times in police reports they say something is messy when it's cluttered. Well, they she also like to say it's messy when there's like two dishes in the sink and they think they should have been washed. And I'm like, all right, well, don't leave it. No offense, my men here, but leave it up to a man to say something's messy yeah. when it's not. And to, like, I have found that too. I've done, a, I've, I've went through a lot of cases and like the things that they'll say versus the pictures that you get are like, no, that's, that doesn't match up. Like, and I could show you, I, I could show you my friend, um, my friend, Sarah, her son, Brandon Embry was murdered and the police mm -hmm. asked her if her son was messy. And she said, yeah, Brandon, Brandon's messy. And so when she got the photos, crime scene photos back, she was livid because his room and bathroom were destroyed. Trash was dumped onto the floor that like, fixtures were ripped off the wall that is destroyed There's that's not messy <laughs> yeah and so when you gotta when you you gotta read a little bit more into things and yes. um sandra was preparing for she was getting a lot of baby clothes she had just gotten a car seat she had a carriage so it's like there might have been stuff you know all that kind of stuff was strewed around her apartment and um so they went into her apartment. They said it was, they said it was messy. And then they didn't see anything like they didn't see her. They looked into the bathroom. They, she didn't, they didn't see her. Her bedroom door was closed and they opened the door and she was in a seated position with a, something around her, a, a ligature around her neck. And we'll get into that in, in a minute, a ligature around her neck. And she was, it was tightly to this, one of these types of, that's on your screen right now. It was these type. it wasn't a regular doorknob. It was a door handle. And yep. to me, that's even more suspicious because I think if you were tied to this kind of door handle and you lean forward because the type of hanging that her hanging was, was a pressure hanging and when you lean forward, I personally believe it would, the ligature would slide forward. It would. So that makes it even more suspicious to me. As so, soon as you pulled forward, it would go up a little or down a little either way. As soon as, so my dad committed suicide and what I understand from like the medical examiner and all that, um, and he hung himself. And from what I understand, um, also when people commit suicide, they, you know, that when they're starting to do it, they Im immediately have a 
a, res- a body trauma response that tries to stop themselves. Mm-hmm. So if she had leaned forward, she would have leaned back and stopped it at some point. Like, yeah. even if she kept going, in fact, she's in a seated position is already just as sketchy as it can get to begin with. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. Especially since she had other means of doing it. And most people don't hang themselves like that. No. Now, Robin William, Aaron Hernandez hung himself like that, but he was also in prison. He and in prison. prisoners, they call this the prison hangings yep. because they don't have a way to do it. No, nope, so they, they use bed have- sheets. I worked in prison. They use bed sheets, clothes, yeah. and there's nowhere for them to go above. So the only things they can use are the bed railings on the bottom of the beds. They oftentimes use that. We have a cutting tool that literally looks like a hook. Yeah. And it's black and we use it to cut it off them when they're trying to do that. Um, because I worked at Bridgewater, which is for the criminally insane. And they, we have to check them every 15 minutes because of stuff like that. And sometimes we'd have to take their bed sheets, their clothes, like they have to give them like this paper gown, like so that they couldn't, you know, yeah. hang themselves like under the bed and then pull out with it. That's exactly what it is because there's nowhere else in the room to be able to do that. And they'll put powder or or lotion on the floor so they can't get any traction. So there's no way for them to drop themselves. Yep. This wasn't like that. You know, she, and as I was going to say, Robin Williams did a similar kind of hanging. But when I read into it, um, he was slightly off the floor or the chair he was in. So he was elevated a little bit. He wasn't. Sitting directly sitting on, on the floor. So like like they claim she was. Her her them saying she was she hung herself is very, very suspicious to me. Um a lot of I mean a lot of women, especially I would think in her condition, would go towards pills. But yeah. even if she was to do a hanging, I don't see her doing it like this. No, Most me neither. People don't. Neither. Um, yeah, Karen can go. You guys can fully check the Karen Reed donation. It's literally on her website, but that's cool. <laughs> um, and as I said, these are I I did a tour of the. This is I got this off the the um website for her her apartment building, and these are the type of door handles that they have. Yeah. Uh, and when I saw those, I was like, Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think she could have done it with that so as i was gonna say would have moved the door handle would have moved that's what i think that's what i think like Um, in order for you to tie it that tight you think a girl (laughs) a woman is going to be able to tie it that tight to the point where the door handle doesn't move if you lean forward i'm just not buying that like yeah (laughs) and they said it was very tight around the doorknob and her and her yeah, I'm just bringing something. I got to bring my email back up because I want to get this perfectly said because it's um, yeah. okay. As I was saying, bef- gonna say before. So, Officer Kotar, he was the first officer to see her, and he said she hung herself with either a belt or a lanyard, or a string or a rope. The next officer to see her said it was a scarf. I don't have a report for Officer Brady, but Officer McCourt said it was a dark colored strap. Now, this is where, to me, it gets really weird. Sergeant Link. Now, after they found her body, they exited her her apartment because at, at that point they realized it was an unintended death. And that just means there was nobody around. There's nobody there. So they have to treat it like it's a crime scene. So they left the apartment and they went to the hallway. They called Lank. And I just want to read what what he put in his report. (laughs) Officer Kotar located Sandra Birchmore in in, in the bedroom, deceased, with a black strap around her neck, which was tied to the bedroom closet door. Why is he saying what Officer Kotar saw? Right. Why is it not what you saw? Yes. He could. I think it would be one thing if he said, you know, they found her hanging in a seated position. They right. called and I went and you he, you would think you would describe what you saw, 
not what right. another officer saw. And the fact that none of these officers say have a agree. On none what it was. Five men can't agree on what, what she hung herself with. Not only that, but don't, wouldn't you take pictures of that if it's a hanging? Like, wouldn't you at least note down exactly what it was when you yes. took her down? Like, wouldn't yes. you have done any of those things? Because, yeah, I know that when my dad did, it was rope. And they could tell me that definitively, that when my yes. dad hung himself, it was rope. <laughs> Not, yes. it was a scarf, or it might have been rope, or maybe it was a dark belt, or I don't know. No, you would know what it was. Like, And the only two things I could see, like, if it was a gym bag strap type deal thing, there are belts that look like straps. I could see mixing those up a little. Yeah. But to say it was a belt or a lanyard, a string or a rope. Now, Officer Kotar can't tell the difference between all four of those things. Like I said, the belt and, and, and the strap I could see because I have right. a belt that kind of looks like that that material of a strap. I could see that, but four five officers can't tell you what she hung was. herself with, you can't tell the difference between a scarf and a belt. No, not only that, but you can't tell the difference between a scarf and a belt and a rope or yeah. a lanyard or a lanyard. Yeah. Like <laughs> a lanyard has something on the end of it. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> and when you see things like this in police reports that are very suspicious and that nobody can agree on, that's when you got to start questioning everything. Oh, everything. Every single tiny thing. Like, um, and the Massachusetts State Police don't, it's redacted what, what they say. Of course it is. Yeah. So. Why is it obviously. redacted though? The case is closed, right? So why is it redacted? Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, the case isn't fully closed. Her death portion of the investigation is closed because they called it suicide. Right. The rest of the case is still open. So the abuse portion. So it's still one case, which uh, technically it's almost two cases. It's two cases. I don't know why they would even have them together. Honestly, a death investigation and an investigation of something that happened before the death where you would hold people responsible would be two separate investigations, not one. I think they're using that as an excuse to keep paperwork. Exactly. exactly. But when are you closing that? I mean, we've already found you already decertified them. So why is it still open is the question. Like. Um, I, I actually spoke to um, Trooper Fanning. He's the lead um, supervisor on this case. And he said that it is still open. They're still looking to try to charge them. I'm just going on what he said. Right, right, right. These aren't my words. Um, right. He said that they're trying to figure out a way to charge, especially Matthew, because of... Figure out a way? I'm sorry. He was the last per What? <laughs> not, not for the death. I'm talking about for the abuse portion. Ah. The, death, the death, they they are they consider that suicide. The death part is closed. Oh. So unless a to me, unless you get confession, we get rid of Michael Morrissey and yeah. a new guy in there or woman in there to look at the case and tell them, no, I want you guys to start over. Yeah. Or we can get it to go to to, to the um, the the state attorney. You know, if, attorney if we, general's office should be doing something. <laughs> yeah, if we can get it to go to the attorney general, yeah. they uh, they can appoint a special prosecutor who can start from the beginning. Right, and that's what they should do because yeah. you can't have Stoughton and Canton cops doing this. I mean, they left Craig Casey on the lawn for two hours, dude. Like. The, they're clearly incompetent. Like, I'm sorry, Canton PD, but you guys, there's a whole boatload of you that need some new goddamn training. Like, there is nothing over there that is working the way it's supposed to. Those puzzle pieces aren't fitting together. It's yeah. just a constant wheel. Like, mm -hmm. someone gets off the wheel and the wheel keeps going. Like, uh, it's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen, especially with Helena Rafferty making stupid statements that make no sense whatsoever. Like, lady, you need to step down disgracefully like yes you made that statement about craig casey that the outcome wouldn't have been different i'm sorry are you all of a sudden a doctor <laughs> that i didn't know about because leaving someone on a lawn that is critically injured for two hours would tell me that maybe it would have been different had you found him right like, yeah 
And also, like, if they investigated, they they walked into Sandra's case and said it was suicide. Right away. If right they now. had investigated as possibly a murder, right. it might have been different. Um, the, the video is on TikTok. her page. Um, I don't know for the audience who's watched the show The Wire. There yeah. Is, there is a character who is murdered in a similar way. Yep. And they put it on, he puts them on a doorknob to make it look like he killed himself. And yep. I made a video about that. So you can go watch that video on the Justice for Sandra Birchmore Facebook page. Um, or if you're on TikTok, it's on my TikTok it, under Mizzy. Um, so it's yeah. worth taking a look at because it shows you how it possibly could have been done. He's he's a sketch ball for sure. I mean, I've watched that video of him coming in and out of this building probably a billion and a half times, dude. And Maybe. his body language of walking in and out of that building is the most sketchy thing I've ever seen in my life. You're clearly hiding your face and who you are from. Like, you know the cameras are there. That's clear because as soon as he comes out of the elevator, he turns immediately. Exactly. And immediately and puts his head and down. And when he walks in, who, who walks in a building like that? No one. Sent you the photo. Like, who walks into a building with their head down and hiding? Like He's that? walking out with his head down. Like, why? Look at your head. Why is your head at the floor, bro? Yeah. Like, I'm so confused as to what, like, what exactly, like, as soon as he gets out here, he turns and, and looks down on camera and then walks out, you know, that door, which is the other picture I just had. He is clearly hiding. And the fact alone is Sandra didn't answer anyone after he went there. Nope. Anyone. So they claim like, oh, she killed herself after he was there. They had this big fight. He didn't want the baby. He already didn't want the baby. He already had said that about a billion freaking times. And Sandra was having that baby, whether he liked it or not. Lo and behold, his wife gave birth the next day. Yeah. And she was in the hospital that night because the major snowstorm, they wanted to make sure, uh, or I speculate, they wanted yeah. to make sure she was able to be there and she wouldn't have to come in the snow. So he drove from the hospital where his wife was to Sandra's house to yeah. br break up with her. Why? You could have broke up with her on the phone. You could have sent her a text. You could have FaceTimed her. You did not need to go to her house. No. Why was Matthew Farwell at her house? Yeah, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that he went to her house to like talk and they had an argument. And she she was ready for that baby, whether he wanted that baby or not. Exactly. Sandra was going to have someone that was going, you know, that baby was going to love her no matter what. And Sandra had a rough life, dude. No, her parents are both dead, right? Like, so... Well, I don't know about her dad, but um, her mother, her mother died in 2016 and so did her grandmother. Right. And then in 2019, her aunt passed away. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who were, you know, such core people to her in her life had passed away. Right. The closest people to her. And a lot of people don't understand that. Like Sandra was... They, they thought she was dating Matthew Farwell, a married man, her, the rest of her family. Right. And a lot of people did not agree with it. So a lot of them stopped talking to her. Mm -hmm. So he's married. So yeah, he's married. He's a police officer. What do you, they're like, what are you doing? But they didn't know that she was groomed and abused for no. since she was 13. 10 years. It's yeah. It, and it's like, so there was a lot of disconnect with her family because people didn't agree with what she was doing. I hate that. That doesn't make yeah. someone a bad person because you don't agree with what they're doing. Like, <laughs> yeah, but the, I, I don't agree. I don't agree with what some of these family members did. You sh they should have kept trying to get Help her. her instead of right. her. Right. Um, but she, she needed people to kick her in the butt being like, yep. what are you doing? And when it comes to the baby, you know, she was so excited. She would tell anybody and everyone. She was calling people she hadn't talked to in years yep. to tell them that she was having a baby. I mean, I taught, um, we did a rally for her at Matthew Morrissey's office. I mean, Michael Morrissey's office. And 
we I some of some old friends of hers, a friends of her aunts showed up and they were like, we saw her, you know, a few weeks before and she was so excited. And they're like, she would never have done this. Well, a friend had just bought her a carriage, like a baby yeah. carriage, like, you know, and and she was like you said, she was messaging people. She hadn't talked to him forever, like super excited. She was having this baby. And like, I think a couple of people asked <clears throat> and I think there was a couple of people she was honest with about who the father was and even William Farwell is the one who ratted his brother out yep. about the baby. And you guys have to remember Matthew Farwell refused the DNA. They asked him for it. He refused. In my opinion, they had multiple probable cause to get that DNA without his goddamn permission. I have something Why are you asking? remind me to tell you my little thing about the DNA part when we get to get back into heal. Cause yeah. there's something that's weird about that, but yes, he refused to take the DNA test. Why? Yeah. Why? why? You know, we already knew it was yours. Um, so it's like, what, what was, there's other things that she was putting a lot of pressure on him. She wanted him to sign the birth certificate. Yep. Um, she wanted to be a part of the baby's life, but she also told coworkers and friends that she, um, she was willing to raise the baby by herself. You know, she wanted money from him because he was the parent, but she was willing, she didn't think they were going to be together anymore. So this thing about her being so upset that they broke up, no, they biased. broke up off and on. They weren't yeah, I was gonna say that was an off and on thing with them. That wouldn't have been, you know, a thing where she was like, okay, now we're broken up again. I'm just going to off myself and my baby because, um, you know, he made me so upset. I'm just not, they had already broken up so many times. They've been through this, this, this ongoing roundabout quite a few times. <laughs> like, yeah. And so Sandra was putting pressure on him and there was a thing that happened with a friend of hers. She borrowed some money, money from her friend and she didn't pay it back. And her friend kept hounding her to get the money back. And so Sandra was like kind of avoiding her. So the friend called the Stoughton police department and told her, told them what happened. And the person at the, the desk was like, I'm sorry. That's kind of like it's a civil issue. Civil, that's a civil case. We can't do anything about that. And yeah. she said, Oh yeah, we'll tell Matthew Farwell to tell his girlfriend to pay me back my money. <laughs> so it got out at work. You know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of people already knew at work. But it got out at work. Oh, damn. And so it was, there was just pressure from him on, from her on all different directions. And personally, I think, I don't think his wife had anything to do with what happened to Sandra. No. But I bet his wife was like, you need to get rid of her. She needs yeah. to be out of her life. We're having another baby. Mm -hmm. So I'm now, sure she's still so with him. Yeah, she's still with him. You gotta be kidding, right? That's a joke. <laughs> oh yeah, she's God. still with him. I, I mean, I old, habits, old habits die hard. That man is not just seeing you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Um, not special, like unfortunately. No, no. And he <laughs> likes young and if you he likes younger girls. Yeah. Geez. And if you look at Sandra, if you're if that's somebody who um you know, somebody who had who who's into younger girls even at 23 sandra looked like she was 15 yeah she, she was sure did. so she was really small short and she looked like she was 15 well yeah she did she looked like a baby like she looked like a child like so yeah i mean that's the thing not only that but i don't know what time he left the hospital and returned what do you need and returned the hospital I'm not sure what time you did I that didn't know either, but it take. I looked it up. It takes about 20 minutes to get to, um, her apartment from hit from the hospital, but you got to yep. remember it was snowing no heavily. Right. Um, so if you look at the, in the back of that video, there is like, there's a good amount of, there's at least six inches of snow out there. Yeah. She was cleaning so, up her car. Sandra was so, cleaning up her car. And who goes to their girlfriend's house in the middle of a blizzard to break up with them? Yeah, I mean, nobody. Yeah. You would call her and be like, "No, we're done." You wouldn't go there. No, no, you would not. Not so by a why? long shot. Again, why was he there? 
And that's a good question. Only Matthew Farwell knows that. And I think we all know the answer to that. Unfortunately, yeah. we can't prove it. You know, I wish we could because then other thing that bothers me about this. No, we're not going to bash the wife. I I've been an abused woman. I've literally been in an abusive relationship. I am a domestic violence survivor. My point is, is if someone had been <clears throat> telling me like, wake up, Elise, wake up. Yeah. Like, you know, like if someone had just been there to be like, this isn't going to change. Like, this is going to be the same over and over and over and over and over again. Like, maybe I would have woken up a little quicker. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But I mean, it's, you know, men like that don't change. It doesn't just magically change where they're just going to see one woman and now they're a one woman man. Like, unfortunately, old, old habits die hard for anyone. Like, you know, yeah, no, there is no statute of limitations on murder. Now, that's the problem. See, that's what I was just about to say. The other problem I have with this whole thing is that um, Morrissey basically right away was like, nope, suicide. Yeah. Like, Morrissey himself. Like, I'm sorry, what? Did What? <laughs> yeah. It, and um, there are, there's a statute of limitations, I believe, with the abuse. Yeah. But, but. In talking to Fanning, he said they they have different regulations or different things that they can go for. Yeah. Hold on, I'm just trying to get my computer back up because I can't read any. Um, I'm on my phone, so I can't read any of the yeah. comments. Um, so because because it had to do with like the program, and that's how it started. Right. And she was 15. They can go at statues that were kind of like having to do with like the church, like the church abuse scandals. And yeah, those. Also at the same time, there's no st statue of limitations. I don't think it is when it comes to children, when it comes to adolescents. Yeah. So he said there, so. he said there are some things that they're, they're looking at, but it's like, sure hurry the hell uh, up and how motivated are they? Not and really. when you have a DA who, seems to want to cover up crimes of police officers yeah how motivated are they bothers the hell out of me dude like there he is folks pampers morrissey um with robert divine yeah with robert divine who should have been fired long ages ago he just allowed him to destroy lives numerous lives and demote him instead of getting rid of him he should have never been there to begin with there was no reason for him to have already not been fired a long freaking time ago like that's unacceptable. <clears throat> unacceptable. Like and he should when, not have been yeah. allowed to continue. When you go back to the beginning of the program, um, the the Explorers program, um, I spoke to some. I, I spoke to the mother of a young man who was in the program, and he she said that they were awful to the boys, and they were always like they they gave. Um, they treated the girls so much better and they were like flirty with the girls and they like treated the boys like crap. I had um, another student tell me that they treated the boys like crap um, and a girl that was interviewed by this, who was in the report, the Stoughton um, police report, uh, the internal report that, and I believe the Massachusetts State Police interviewed her that she was groomed by Divine and she was in the first um, iteration of the program. And she, he took her into a closet in the back room of this, in the school, it was in the gym area. And she had the biggest crush on him. She was 12 years old. She mm -hmm. thought the, you know, sun and moon set on him. Like she was like in love with him. He's but so she, hot. <laughs> it was, it, it was her first crush, you know? Yeah. So he, she was upset that he was getting married. Oh. So he took her into the closet and he picked her up and put her on a desk and told her that she was beautiful. And, you know, when she turned 18, he would take her out on a date. He's getting married and he's saying this right. to a child. A, chi a 12 year old. Yeah. And he, like, he didn't like fully touch her. He didn't like, you know, grope her but he i think he touched her cheek and and he was like consoling her and she's lucky like when she saw what happened to sandra like it really hit her hard because oh, sure, she 
was like, that could have been me. And she's lucky she made a mistake and he ended up kicking her out of the program. So I said, that saved you. Yeah. Because she would have, she could have been one of these victims. A victim. She would have, she would have been one of these mm-hmm. victims. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Cause you can't think that Sandra or that girl is like the only one. There's no way these they're groomers. That's what they do. There's probably many, many more. And I'll tell you from being abused as a kid, like, I don't know why, don't ask me why, but there's shame that comes with that. And like some people go to the grave with that information. Like mm-hmm. I, I think I was 20, 20 when I finally told someone and it was yeah. a friend of mine that I got. And after I got it out, like it felt so much better to actually get it out. Right. Like I had PTSD already, like, you know, all this stuff. And like, I was an addict and like that plate, all of that plays into it, all of it until you learn to like sort of get it out. Like you're never going to fix the actual like issue inside. And so I remember feeling like a sense of liberation after telling someone what had happened to me. And then I was able to go to, you know, my mom and the rest of my family and say, this is what happened, you know, but you feel a sense of shame and some people will never, ever tell what happened to them. They will die and no one will know. Like, and people don't understand that, like, they don't, that directly affects your personality, how you interact with people. And a lot of girls either become one or two, two ways. They either become hypersexual like Sandra was, or they become like really prudish. They, they're like nuns basically. And people thought we're thinking she was a badge bunny. Yeah, she wasn't. She was, she, in her eyes, she, she was, you know, with this guy who she really cared about and she was kind of obsessed with Yeah, because that's all she knew. Yep. You know, she came from a home, you know, a home where her mother was sickly. She had to grow up fast, but she was also immature too. Yep. So she was that um, immaturity sometimes comes with that also. It does. I so- was both. I was very like, I, I was a stripper for 10 years. Hello. Like, although I didn't like sexual wise, like not as TMI for people, but like, I actually sex was not a thing I even liked to engage in being a stripper. I liked because I liked the dancing part sex. No, like that was my, my personal life with sex. Like it was very little, like, you know what I mean? I didn't like, that's kind of how it affects you when you're abused like that. Like it, it's not a thing that you enjoy. It's something you want to avoid. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's like, and, and people just didn't understand why Sandra was like that. And it's like, you know, looking at a person looking at the situation now, they could see why she was like this, why she let these, once she turned into an adult, because I had somebody, I, I posted about Sandra's story and a true crime page on Facebook. And they were like, yeah, but she was an adult when she was 23. She could have got away from them. I'm like, you have your room since you're 13. <laughs> it's yeah, not the same. Her. It's not, that's not how it works. And that's what my thing was. I was like, she was groomed. And also, you know, Matthew was like, he helped her move into this apartment. Yep. So it's like she he was an everyday part of her life. Mm-hmm. And these men were giving her attention. She obviously enjoyed the attention. But they it happens though when you're abused. And they totally took advantage of a young woman who needed them to protect her. They're and supposed I, to be the protectors. And they yeah. were the ones who did this to her. Yeah. And that's what bothers me the most is like Sandra's story is a lot of people's story. And the fact that we're not, we don't talk about it that much is something that bothers me. My abuser obviously wasn't a police officer, but nonetheless was a family member. So that's someone who's supposed to protect you. They're supposed to be there for you. They're supposed to be able to like make sure nothing bad happens to you. And when that person is the person that does something bad to you and no, you don't realize when you're being groomed. No, I would no, you do not. As a matter of fact, you think that that person is like cool in some way or like yeah. that, that's, not what, that's supposed to happen. Like you, you don't know you're a kid, first of all. So even when you grow into an adult, there's that almost attachment of like believing that the person is 
is is good even though you know kind of deep deep down they're not like if that's the way it works like i can't explain i guess the psycho psychology of it but i guess you would understand it better if it had been you you know what i'm saying like it's yeah. hard to explain to other people and it's hard for them to understand i totally get it but it, when it's you <laughs> yeah and, and he, like i said she she never really had any other relationship besides matthew farwell right and in the, it I almost put them in different buckets because Matthew was like, I hate to even say a relationship, but he was the relationship. Right. You know, um, I don't even know what William Farrell was up to. We I don't know. think that he was almost, cause he introduced her to a, a, oh, um, a, a, uh, what do they call Abington? it? A military recruiter. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yep. he was looking himself, this is weird. He was looking himself up in the system. You know, the same system that, that, um, that uh, dispatcher got Sieges. fired for. Yeah. Yes. Sieges. He was looking, he looked himself up in that 24 times. And he also was looking Sandra up in that system. What? 24 times. Why was he looking himself up those many times, that many times? That is weird. Clearly, if there was a flag or somebody reported him for something. Exactly. And what would they have reported him and Sandra? For? Right. I right. think he was almost trafficking Sandra. That is my mm -hmm. possibility that it could be. Because why was he introducing her to other men? Right. Especially recruiters when she didn't want to go to the military. She wanted to be well, a police she officer. Did, she did want to go into the military. Well, that's right. But... Didn't she, she took the civil service exam though? She was on the list, right? I don't know much about that. I actually, when you talked about it that one time, I that was the first I had heard about that. Yeah, yep. She, I, uh, what I found was she was she was on the she was on the list. She took the civil service exam, and she which, was on the list to be a student officer. Which I also thought was kind of weird because how would she have been able to been there as an officer? With the, the other people knew it was going on. I might have changed after she got pregnant and she knew she probably couldn't, but it, it, but it just that's one of the things I thought about. I was like, how she, yeah. how could she have gone to to Stoughton and be a be a police officer? Right. Because it, it that was I don't know, that's something I sound weird. Um well because when you're abused, you don't think about it as like, oh, these are all my abusers. Like those are your friends right now. Like those are yeah. the people you like count on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like those aren't your abusers until far later when you start doing like mental health therapy, PTSD therapy, you know, like CBT, which is what I do, cognitive behavioral therapy. Like it changes the way you think so that it changes the behavior, you know, like my reactions. Like for instance, I don't put my back. I don't like my, I don't like people walking behind me. I like my back to a wall. I like to know where all the exits are. I'm hyper aware of all that. And so in order yeah. to change that behavior, cause that's not normal, right? That's from PTSD. And so in order to change the behavior, you got to change the way you think about it when it happens. So, um, until you start going through stuff like that, you actually don't realize a lot. There's a lot. Oh, right? yeah. You don't really, Sandra yeah. never had that chance. She never had that chance. And she was in therapy, but she wasn't telling her therapist everything. Right. She was very protective of them. Like That's another thing. her mm -hmm. friend was a hold on one second. I just I'm trying to get my computer just to, to work so I can look yeah. at once we start ask letting people ask questions. Yeah. I don't even know where my cigarettes went. I like lost them somehow, some way. <laughs> um her a friend of hers posted in the, the chat room or on the um the page that I don't know why my computer is not working. My computer no, because it wants to be a pain today. I usually pop them up on the screen anyway. I can't, uh, I can't oh, read them because I'm on right. my phone. Um, <laughs> I'll put my glasses on. Maybe I'll be able to read them. So I'm not, but you're, you're just going to have to read them to me. Yeah, um, I can read them to you. Yeah, I, I mean, I can sort of read them. Um, but one of the things her a friend of hers who was in the program with her um said that they knew about what was going on and they refused to come forward because Sandra had made her promise that she wouldn't tell anybody when she was alive when they were in the program 
Right. And I told her if the best way to honor Sandra is, is come to forward. tell. Right. And she said, no, I refuse. She's like, I'm honoring her, her, pro my promise to her. And she said that she knew of three other girls oh. that were in the same situation. I wish they would come forward. It's hard, dude. Listen, I still, I still, to this day, have not went to a police station and said, this is what happened to me. This is, my, that's a difficult, that's a very hard, I've talked about it with other victims of the same person. Mm -hmm. And yes. it is not an easy thing to decide by a long shot at all. Like, that's a very difficult thing. I'm still, I'm still in contemplation mode, you know, like, and it's yeah. been since I was a kid, I'm thir almost 37, I'll be 37 this month. So like, it's, it's not an easy, but I, I think it would change if someone died. That was a victim. I think at that point I would, I would have, I would do it. But also who are you going to come forward to? Not you, right. them. Right. Right. Not, not the Stoughton police, not the Canton police, not the Mass State police. So who now? So who, 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 who can you trust? Who can you trust? If you can't trust the police, who can you trust? Right. Um, I, I, I wish I had, I spoke to the deputy um, of Stoughton. I wasn't, I didn't have any questions. I spoke to him about the rally that we were doing a few, about a month ago. And yeah. I didn't ask him questions. And I'm going to see if I can set up an appointment with him. Because he's the one yeah. who actually did the investigation. Um, and when, when fanning called me i was not expecting the phone call ah so you weren't prepared to ask the questions you want to ask yeah. no because just off the cuff what you yeah. can remember because <laughs> i what had happened was we did the rally at morrissey's office like out in front of his office and then we all wrote there was like nine of us we wrote on the back of the flyer letters to him and then we brought it I, three of us brought it up to the office and he was he was on vacation which I found find odd because it's the same week later on that Friday. This was a Monday, and on Friday is when he did that crazy uh, speech. Speech he did, yes. Yeah, so was he really on, was he really on vacation? He was in his office. So yeah. <laughs> so we wrote letters to him, and I call I called a couple weeks later, and I said, you know, hey, we wrote letters to him. What's going on? I haven't heard back, and. I, Cause I had asked to speak to somebody else and they said, Oh, well, you know, give me the runaround while I was there. So nobody called me, like, so I messed up. I, it, it was a good mistake though. It was, I thought somebody had called my phone and I thought it was somebody from there had called because it said Canton. Right. And I missed it. So I called back his office and they're like, no, we, we didn't call you, but they sent me to his secretary and I got to speak to her. So oh, it was like a happy, good mistake. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and then like 45 minutes later, I'm watching General Hospital with my mom. And it says Canton. And I'm like, oh, crap. And I'm like, so I like ran to the other room. And my dog's barking. So I couldn't even hear who who, who it was, who I'm talking to. <laughs> and then so him and I talked. Phil, it was Fanning calling me back. So I didn't have any questions ready. Like me calling Morrissey's office, I wasn't expecting to talk, talk to them. I figured right. they were going to give me the runaround. Yep. I was just calling. But I had questions I would have asked. If I, right. I would have been able to ask questions. But with Fanning, I was not ready for it. So yeah, no. but I, there were questions I wish I asked. But I pushed back a lot. On. Yeah, there's always going to be questions you wish you asked later on when you think about it, though. Yeah. It, that's always going to happen. That's happened yeah. to me a million times. And I either try to go back at it again or, you know, maybe it, I don't get them answered, but I at least try. <laughs> yeah. Um, I pushed back a lot on her being a suicide. Yeah. And he said, I've seen a lot of suicides. It was definitely a suicide. And I said, yeah, but he was a detective. He would have known how to stage the scene. And he was like, yeah, but he, he, he wasn't really a detective. And I was like, okay. Um, you're either you are, or you aren't, it's not, yeah. you're not really like, <laughs> that's just an excuse. And I'm sorry. But even if you thought he was a shitty detective, yeah. even shitty detectives remember shit. They're just yeah. lazy yeah. on the job. And that's you know? something that's lazy on the job about is staging a fucking suicide. Just saying. Yeah. Like, so I, I, like I said, he, we kept talking and I kept coming back to, how I felt it was a suicide, 
like, like I said, we talked for, I mean, I was happy he gave me, I mean, 40 minutes to talk to a, a cop about, you know, about it. I was, I was happy that he did it, right. but I made sure to keep pushing back upon him. And right. I said, you know, it would do the public a lot more good if you guys came out and actually talked about the case. And he right. said, well, we've put out statements. I said, there's a big difference in putting out statements or you coming out and talking to having a press conference. Uh, yes. And you can put so, out this small little statement that everybody hears all the time about every case. We deeply care about the family and blah, 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 all the bullshit that they always spend PR wise that they say yeah. for every goddamn case, they don't want to actually come out and answer questions. Well, why not a press conference? Oh, cause you'd have to answer questions. Yeah, exactly. That's that they don't want to answer questions. They don't want to have to put the details out there. Um, right. So that's the thing I, details, but no, her, she does have members of her family still alive. I think an aunt, maybe some cousins, her, her cousin, her cousin is a moderator on the board on our page. Um, she doesn't post a lot. She doesn't talk a lot, but she is a moderator. Um, she does have, she does have a family out there, but unfortunately because of the lawsuit, they have been asked not to talk publicly that bugs me um i know some of them would like to because i've spoken to a few people and they would love to speak up but they're honoring the aunt's lawyer you know it's her aunt is the executor of, of her estate so and that's right. what the lawyer wants for people well, to stay quiet which i personally don't understand i respect that that's their decision the way they're going to go about it. But I personally don't think that's the best way of doing it. A case like this, you want the public behind you. Yes. Yes, you do. Not only do you want the public behind you, but at the same time, you want to be able to know that you're fighting for what you actually think. If you don't actually think that she committed suicide, then why fight that? I get it. It's civil. You want to say, you know, maybe she, you know, they forced her to commit suicide so that you can, you know, get the civil suit and maybe you can at least get some justice with damages. But like, is that the way if it's not what you actually think happened? Like for me, no, I couldn't. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't oh, I, I mean, I, you and I have talked about it. I'm too outspoken yeah. of a person. Uh, the, the case I was telling you about at the beginning, my friend, Sarah, her son, Brandon, I tell her all the time. I don't know how, she is she's very calm she's a very calm person yeah there's a there's a mama bear in her and she has a rage inside her heart because she's oh, angry that his case has been swept under the rug but i tell her all the time i say i don't know how you do it because i would have lit a police car on on fire by yeah. now yeah i would have i said i would i would be out there every day protesting yeah. 100%. In front of i don't I care would, if i was a one-man band like yeah, i'd be out exactly. there every day being a fucking thorn in your side until you took another look at it like yeah <laughs> that's then that's i tell her i said and she's quietly doing it i mean she she's posting she's putting everything out there i said of but course. i i i just know my personality Me i would, too. i would be kicking the door in every i would be arrested every day no me too oh me too 100 so. percent I'd be like, you are going to jail and you're going to jail for sleeping on the mark. I'd be arrested for all sorts of shit. Like, I don't care. Nope, not not my kid. No, none of the cops are in jail, Bob. Nope, yeah. none of them. So, no. 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 And Matthew Farwell has a good chance of going to jail because he did, he did uh, start molesting her at 15. But the problem is there's a catch-22. If they can't get other witnesses to come forward, who saw them directly together or flirting or knew of things that happened, Sanders not there to be a witness against them. So if they can't get witnesses to come forward, who's going to testify? They can't, right. they can't charge them par partially because of that, which to right. me, it makes, I, I get it on one hand, but you charge people with murder and that person isn't there to testify against that person. So I think that's something that needs to change in our justice system. No, there's so many things that need to, you know, I, that need to change in our justice system. Like, Hey, we need to stop letting judges like just do whatever the hell they want. There needs to be accountability when it comes to judges as well. Like 
the only accountability we have is allowing <clears throat> the, our legislature to remove them off the bench, except they're such pussies, they won't even vote it out of committee. Yeah. So how the hell are we going to change anything if everybody's too afraid of Judge Aspel who keeps breaking the law and they don't care because they're a judge and they can do whatever. And I'll never forget the time my lawyer told me, he's a judge, he can do whatever he wants. I looked at him and I go, no, he can't. And that's the problem right in there. Like, yeah. Th and also, no. with, I want to say with the, the Karen Reed case and with the Sandra Birchmore case, I know a lot of people think who, who have just opened their eyes to how messed up our justice system and policing is in this country. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Welcome yeah. to the party. Thank you. Right. Thank you for opening your eyes. But people need to stop thinking that it's because Morrissey is a Democrat. It has yeah, nothing no. to do with it. It's not about party because I can list other part uh, other cases that yeah. were with a Republican DA or yeah, a Republican police commissioner or chief. Yeah. It's not about party. It's not about blue or red. It's about power and money. Yes. Greed. Greed. Power, money, greed. It, it turns people bad, just a bad freaking egg. And you have to remember when you continuously hold on to that power and greed and money and you can do whatever you want with it, why would you let it go? And exactly. at that point, you're just like, oh, don't worry about it. Whatever you did, it's cool. I can protect you. It's fine. Like, And that's what Maurice has been doing for his entire goddamn career. So it didn't matter whether he was going to be a Republican or a Democrat, if he lived in another state that was highly Republican, anyone, he would, he would have run as a Republican, like bottom line, didn't matter what he was or wasn't blue, red, like that, that's meant to divide people. Hence why I've never been registered with either party. And I'm registered as an independent because it's not either one. Yes. It's both. No, unfortunately, yeah, she does not want to join the show. She just wanted to give me a kiss while she went potty. She woke up to go potty. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not, you know, and I know we're so divided in this country right now, but we as citizens need to come together to take things back. And this is something that, especially for the people who are just realizing how bad policing is in this yeah. country and how police and district attorneys, they use their power to manipulate cases and manipulate the system we need to work together as citizens this is something we can come together on this is something is. whether you're a democrat or a republican or independent because this is about us mm -hmm. you know this could happen to anyone and it has happened to a lot of people and i don't want to talk too much about the karen reed case but what's going on with her if she goes to prison it's going to take a lot to get her get out. Get her out. Once it's not, the system's not meant the for that. System, once yeah. they got their claws in you, it. even when they know they're wrong, they could have DA from a, uh, DNA from another DNA. person. Doesn't they matter. still won't let you out. My friend is working on a case of a man who they have DNA. And Doesn't the matter. DNA is of the police chief's son. And they will not let this guy out of jail. Nope. He's in jail for life now for like 300 years and they will not let him out of prison because the corruption. Yep. So. Also, you got to get a judge to say that it's new evidence. If a judge won't say it's new evidence and they're involved in said corruption, guess what? They won't yep. even hear about it. Even if you have the DNA and you're like, Hey, look, see what I got here. See, Hey, it happens all the time. People spend another 10 years in prison with DNA in their hand. Like, Hey, it's not yep. my DNA. Prove I'm innocent. And they're yep. like, oh, no, that's not that's not new. We can't consider that new evidence. Sorry, just miss. Sorry, let's see you later. And then you yep. run out of appeals and then you're screwed. Like, it's not meant to let people out who are at, fine once they're there. It's just not. Our justice system was never meant to actually help innocent people go free at all. Like, <laughs> And there are so change. many, so many DAs that are so into winning. So they would rather win the case than let a somebody who is not guilty go free yeah, yeah. and that's kind of like with what say what's going on with you know the da is so dug in on karen reed and the da is so dug in they're so dug in about sandra commits committed suicide yeah. they should take another they need to take another look at this case 
Oh, yeah, they Why did. are they letting police officers get off with crimes of murder? Time. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's a problem, Penny, is a judge can order a new trial if they think there was corruption or cover-up. But do you know how often that actually happens, that actually falls through? Not very. Not very. Yeah, you might have a, a stick-out judge here or there, but it is not often that a judge just goes, yeah, you know what, I agree, let's just do this whole thing over. Like, that's not, that's, it's, unfortunately, that's just not the way our justice system works. Like, yeah, once in a while, but, you know. Yeah, that's an outlier. That's an outlier right. case if it happens. But right. once the justice system gets their claws in someone, usually it's hard. That's why the 12 members of the jury come into factor. But it's also, they're only seeing what's put in front of them. What they're allowed to see. <laughs> yeah. So, but back to Sandra. Um, she she deserves her case to be reopened. Um, you know, there's aspects, like I said, what was William Farwell up to? Why was he looking himself up 24 times in that system? Why was he looking up Sander? Um, there were other officers. Uh, actually, let me go back to that girl who was groomed by Divine. Yeah. She told me that um, Divine used to drive around with girls in his squad car and his personal car. They would be all the, at the police station in his office all the time. So other officers saw what was going on. Why didn't anybody stop it? She told me one time she was in his office in a low cut shirt. And one of the officers that worked with him in the program told her, yelled at her and told her to get out of his, get out of there. Yeah. So it, it, there are other officers that know what was going on. Was there on the extent, but there yeah. were officers that knew. I, I, I bet a lot of officers knew about Sandra. Oh, I would put money on it. I'd put and there might even be officers from another precinct that, uh, another town that knew about right. her. Just think about it. The Canton cops went to the Stoughton court system because they were yeah. neighboring towns, so they were chummy. You know. Divine grew up in Canton. Yep. He went to school with Fanning. No, I'm right. sorry, not Fanning. Sorry. He went with to, he graduated Link? with Lank. Yeah, with Lank. So it's like they're all chummy. They know each other. Yeah. So I wonder who in Canton knew about Sandra. Probably quite a few people, I'm guessing. See, that's the thing, is is there's no accountability for these people that were supposed to protect and knew and said nothing. Exactly. And did nothing. Like, what about our therapist? Like, she knew some things and you said nothing. You did nothing. Like, that's your job. That's literally part of your job. Like. Mm -hmm. And why didn't somebody stop and, and save this girl? Right. Why didn't somebody step in? You know, and this thin blue line mm. is so ass backwards because. I, I understand why cops want to be able to make sure that the person next to them is, if they're in a gunfight, that person's going to be like, you're my dog. Right. I'm down for you. Right. But when, when another officer is breaking the law and hurting citizens, there should, the system is so ass backwards because the system, if somebody did come forward and report about Sandra, they would be ostracized. Because they said that's the problem. Yes. They would have been sent out until nowhere's land. And I literally have cops that I've literally talked to that said something about something and were sent out to no man's land and had to like behave and, and just do paperwork for a while until they were brought back. Like some of them never get brought back. If you tell yep. on another officer for doing something, they send you to the worst place ever in the middle of friggin' nowhere exactly. to just suffer. Like <laughs> so it's like it's we give these people power over us. They have badges and guns and they have power over all of us. And that's why they say, I don't necessarily agree with ACAB. All cops are bad. But right. if they're all going to work in the same system and not fix it, they need to fix it themselves. Right. If, if they're not, if, if, the legislatures aren't going to fix it. 
legislatively and pass laws to fix it. They need to fix it. Them. It needs to be fixed within. Yeah. And things we'll like this can't happen anymore. Right. And they will because they won't because they're just afraid. Listen, it was it was reported she took the civil service exam and was on the list. I can only give you guys what I got from the reporting that came out. That was one of the things that they reported that she was on the civil service exam um, and she was on the list. So I don't know, you know, we can call, you can call, you know, maybe the Stoughton PD or the Canton PD and find out, but they could have removed it. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I have no idea how the civil service exam list works. No clue whatsoever. It's one thing I really don't know about. <laughs> My aunt took the civil service exam back in the early nineties and, and passed and was going to be a cop and then chose not to for whatever reason. I think it's because they wanted to put her like in Western Mass or something. And she was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was also a woman. So there's that. Yeah. Like, you know. But I mean, my, that's that's my problem. Is like, I, I feel like, yeah, of course, not all cops are bad. Of course, we. I mean, I bought a cop, uh, a coffee when he was in line behind me at Mary Lou's before I left for Florida. And like, no, they're not all bad. Um, But at the same time, if you're if you know there's a crime being committed by a fellow officer, right, and you can't say something and you're looking the other way, you're just as bad. Yeah, like I you're said it, you want to risk your pension and your livelihood. I, I totally get it. I'm not saying like it's self preservation, really, but like this isn't a regular job, right? Like this isn't a regular job where like you know, you can get, you know, you're going to get fired and then what you just go somewhere else. Like this is, you should be hold held to a higher standard. Exactly. Higher standard. Yes. Mary Lewis, I have it on tap, sir. If I could have an IV for it, I would. All right. <laughs> That's it's, my call. <laughs> it's, it's, we give these people power over us, you know, yeah. in, in, in this society, because, you know, like if, we take policing away there we need we it's like we need them but it's broken too yeah it so is. it's like you're damned if you do if you're damned if you don't yeah. but they we need to have they're they they need to be held at a higher standard we need to there needs to be more stuff that goes into when police become police like psychological stuff um that more of a background check because these we can't allow these people who have so much power over us to continue to be in these positions to hurt citizens like Sander was hurt. Right. And well, I mean, like Robert Devine was the deputy chief in yeah. Stoughton. Yeah. He How did he get that high in Stoughton when people knew he was shady when it came to children? Power. Power. So it's like, it's, it, 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 I'm disappointed in the report that they did because they, the Stoughton, yes, they did a, a good job of going after those three, kind of, but sort of, they didn't take the next step. They didn't investigate who knew were there other officers. Right. Because if another officer knew what was going on, they should be gone too. If another officer participated, they really need to be gone. Right. You know, and these officers could testify against these three people. Right. That's so the thing. Like, they I mean, testify while I'm sure there's other officers that knew some stuff that was going on. Of course there was, dude. Somebody had, first of all, you're not going to tell me that you don't have at least one friend at work that you tell stuff to. Come on. Of course you do. Like, And that's where kind of Josh Heal comes in. Yeah. Joshua Heal was, he worked in the, um, the I can't even think of what it's called. Uh, he, animal control. He was an animal yeah. control officer in Stoughton. And he and Sandra were friends. But he also basically bartered with her it, with oral sex, and he gave her a cat. <laughs> and I don't put him 
he, he's a scumbag. I don't yeah. put him in the category of the other three because she was older. He's just as much of a scumbag, but he's in a little different of a category to me. But he, he went on to become a police officer in Abington and he was working in schools. He was an SRO officer. Of course. And there's sketchy things that were going on with that. Now, was I he Because um, I, I couldn't figure out um, last night, I was trying to figure out um, where I had heard um, that he, they went and took DNA from the couch in the animal control office in mm. Stoke. And it actually ended up being on the case because I was like, it's not in the report where, where I had to see it. So I, before, before we came on, I listened while I was putting my makeup on, I listened to the case that right. officer about him. And that's where I, where I had heard it, that they went and got DNA from the couch. Well, if they got DNA from the couch there, why couldn't they have gotten DNA from Farwell? They could have. They just didn't want to. No, nope, they didn't use to at all. Oh, we asked. He said no. Oh, okay, cool. He said no. His brother ratted him out, that being his baby. Like, that's an eyewitness. Exactly. You would have plenty of probable cause to get that DNA one way or another. You chose not to get that DNA. And also, if you went and got DNA from the couch, from the animal control office, where are the results of that? Just wondering. Asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, it could have been redacted because that his portion of the thing is really redacted. His name mm. wasn't even supposed to be in the report. No. But they it unredacted. I, and if the question is, did they do it on purpose or was it an oopsie? I highly doubt that was an oopsie. That was someone who was supposed to be redacting it who could say it was an oopsie, but clearly felt like his <laughs> name needed to be out there. And it did. It yeah. absolutely needed to be out there. Of course there. it did. First of all, why are you going to tell me there's an having the police officer involved, but not tell me who the fuck it is? Like, what? Is exactly. he still on the force? Is he still, is he still operating as an officer? If he is, why? Like, No, he actually, and this is suspicious too. I don't understand why the town of Abington allowed this. He quiet, quietly resigned at the beginning of this year. Quietly. Why? Why? Did you allow him to do that? Why? Why did you just let it be swept under the rug? It's it's total BS. Yeah, it is. He needs to be held responsible just like everybody else who was involved in this fucking scenario. And he is, he's still certified. So he can yeah. be an officer in another town. He, he probably is. could be an officer in another town. I have not been able to... I don't know how to figure that out. But... We wouldn't That's be able to really, unless like someone was like, oh, hey, I know that he's on, you know, this force, like someone who knew him knows where, you know, he's working now. There's no like ultimate list of all of them. There is an, there's a certification list though. Yeah. He's certified. On that. He won't he, tell you where. He's still certified. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that speaks volumes. Like he shouldn't still be certified. Bottom mm -hmm. line, I don't care if you had the most minute thing to do with this you had something to do with it you need to be held responsible you were an officer you don't get to be an officer and then be like oopsie that's a mistake like no that's not a mistake a mistake is like you know you took your gun out of your belt and the safety was off and you shot yourself in the foot like that's a mistake like that's a, that's a that's probably a not a good oopsie but it's an oopsie like yeah you know what i mean like but this not a mistake like no Ch uh, exchanging a cat and the cat wasn't on the records that's what they did they went and pulled the records to see if the cat was in the records and the cat was not was in their it. records so it means he just gave it to her without doing any sort of like paperwork or anything yep yeah unreal exactly. like um the post commission list doesn't it tell you which police department no um, because, um I, think so. I think he was still listed in the post report as Abington. Abington, right. Because he so, had just retired as or resigned at the beginning of this year. Yes. At the beginning, very yeah. beginning of the year. Yeah. So I don't know if it would be on. I mean, they did do an updated. Remember they remember they said they left off Proctor? Oh, yeah. we just flipped him off accidentally. Like, oh yeah, did you? Like 
<laughs> so maybe it might be on the post list. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. You know, but yeah. the last maybe. post list I saw, he wasn't, he was listed. Somebody sent me that like a screenshot of, of him being recertified. He was recertified, I believe, last year. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, what the hell? Like, he's recertified. That, well, he didn't lose his certification. So that right there, I have a problem with to begin with. They mm -hmm. should all lose their certifications because that's how they're able to bounce between different police departments. And even if they lose their certification here, technically they could still go to a different, like move down south and just be a cop down there. Like, that's yep. another thing that follows me. There should be a certification for you know, the whole United States. You lose that damn certification, you could never be a cop anywhere in the United States ever again. Exactly. What's his name again? What's Who? the what's the Abington cop's name again? Joshua Heal. Joshua Heal. His name's Joshua Heal. So if you find it, let me know. Yeah, definitely. On the post commission list. Yeah, uh, I if like anybody to... has any information, like if anybody wants to come forward, please message me. If you go to the San Justice for Sandra Birchmore page, you can easily make contact with me. I'm always looking for information. Like if you knew any of these officers, I know one time when I was on here, there was a young woman who knew the Farwells. Um, I have not, she has not reached out to me. I would love for her to reach back out to me. Um, it, there, you know, it, this stuff needs to come out. Yeah, it this does. can't be buried because these people are going to do it to somebody else. Yeah, they are. Just because they're not police officers doesn't mean they can't hurt other women or children. No, they can. Of course they can, and they will. If they have the opportunity, abusers don't just stop. They don't just magically stop because they were caught. It's the old yeah. habits die hard. Like, you know. And I think war needs, needs to be delved into William Farwell. I agree with that 100% because I couldn't really find much on him and I dug a little like and you know there's plenty on Matthew Farwell like plenty for days but William Farwell not that much dude not that much and I wonder why like and I was told by a classmate that classmate there was a classmate that reached out to me after I was on um Yellow Cottage Tales months ago and yeah. this classmate reached out to me because they were pissed because I I was using the analogy of them being like the cool kids, the jocks in the program. Right. I wasn't meaning in school. I was meaning yeah, right. in the, the But that's what they would have been in that sort of program. I was like, oh, these are the we wanna we wanna be with those guys because that's what looks like Yeah. Because yeah. Devine was letting them lead it, it, the program so he was letting them be leaders and he was hanging out so he was he was the cool guy too and he was hanging out with them giving them authority over other students so yeah. they were the cool guys in the police program right the explorers program and they were older kids hanging out at the junior high so they were cool older kids they weren't right. cool to their peers they weren't cool to the other high school kids everybody else thought they were weirdos but this person said they were shocked that Matthew was the one who was being accused of murder. He said, I, I was absolutely shocked. He said, if you told me that William was accused of murder, I would have believed it. But <laughs> Matthew, he was shocked with. Interesting. But yeah. again, and again, you have serial killers that literally go out and serial kill and their whole families have no freaking idea. And they're like, oh, they would never hurt a fly. And exactly. then like they confess and they're like, I would have never. Like, you don't actually really know someone, I guess. Like, because it's insane to me how many people was like, oh, well, I mean, he couldn't hurt a fly. And then it comes out and they're like, he killed like, you know, 50 people. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they <laughs> said that William got in a lot of trouble in school, but Matthew was very quiet. Mm, that doesn't strike me. See, that's the thing. Sometimes it's the quiet ones you gotta exactly. <laughs> watch out for, you know what I mean? But I didn't, I, when I'm digging on William, I'm not finding that much other than just being like a weird kid, like, a, you know, a weird kid. That's it. Like they weren't like super popular and like they kind of just hung out in a group of like two or three. And that was like it. I think there was like a neighbor kid or something that they used to hang out with. And that was it. Like, that's all I could get really on him. 
I hadn't heard from any of like the people who <clears throat> worked with either one of them, which I wish some of those people would reach out. Like, even if you do it anonymously, like, you know, you can make a whole fake email and email <laughs> Twisted Tragedies, Twisted Tragedies 3 at Gmail, or make a whole fake email and fake Facebook and, and get in touch with Mizzy. Like, still want to hear it, dude. Like, I still want to hear what people have to say. Like, it's still important. Like, and if you're afraid of like, losing your job or your career or, you know, whatever it is that you're afraid of, like you, you can do it anonymously. There's a ways to do it anonymously. It's still yeah. important information one way or another. Like you can also email me. I have a um, separate email uh, uh, page just for Sandra, justice for Sandra Birchmore at gmail.com. You can email me there too. Um, yeah. But yeah, reach out, reach out. Cause you know, if she finds anything interesting, she'll, she'll let me know. She knows that I'm working on the case. You know, I will. this Absolutely. is my case. This is day and night. I work on this case. It's, it's, you know, I'm a blogger myself. I interview families of people who have been murdered and I haven't done anything in, since uh, February I started working on this case. Yeah. And when I heard about it about a year ago, it was when the report came out, I saw our news report and I was like, I got to look into that case. And I looked it up and I was like, okay, I need to come back to this case when I was done working on the case I was working on. Yep. And it was like, Sanders case was a siren song. It just yeah. kept calling me and calling me and calling me. And I would, you know, monitor it, look it, look up, look it up and see if anything new came out. And uh, Brandon's mom, Sarah, she just happened to say, What's up with that Sandra Birchmore case? Almost like it was like, you need to start working on this case. Pay and attention. Her and I, for two weeks, that's all we talked about. Mm -hmm. We spent day and night look trying to figure things out. I watched everything I could watch, every news report, um, every you know blog. I listened to the case. I listened. I I read every article I could read, and she said to me. If you run her page, I will do the petition because she had to work on her son's murder and she right. couldn't handle working on because it's a lot of work to, to be. Yeah, to, it is. <laughs> you know? And so I said, OK, I'll do it. I mean, I have two videos that I had since early summer, so probably June to edit. Yeah. Editing and is a bitch, though. <laughs> it's a bitch. I haven't done any of that. And because I've been working on this case and this case is like, I wake, I go to bed thinking about it. I wake up thinking about it. Of course. It's so because where's the justice for Sandra? Like, where, where is it? Like, it just continues to be, oh, well, you know, she probably didn't kill herself, but no one's going to look into it. And that's not friggin' okay, dude. Like she doesn't have a voice anymore. Her baby doesn't have a voice anymore. Like someone's got to do it for her. And as you said, most of her family has passed away except for the one aunt that's doing the civil stuff right now and the lawyer has told everybody else to shut the hell up so it's like that's not really going to help sandra is it no so the only thing we can do is keep pushing on it and pushing on it and pushing on it and pushing on it until something breaks and we just keep aggravating people until they finally agree to look into it because at that, that point they just want you to go away right like, like fine fine if you go away like <laughs> i told her cousin i was like you know what i adopted sandra as my little sister Right. I was like, I fight for my family. I said, so I'm going to keep fighting for her. Yeah, I will not stop. I, I have a big mouth. I will, I will, I, if I was healthy, I would be a nightmare for Stoughton PD. Right. I would be a nightmare, but mm. I, I don't drive anymore because of my migraines. So I can't yep. go down to Stoughton all the time, but I am going to keep pushing this case because it needs to get out there. It, it, and it's not just, I believe Sandra is an iceberg. She's the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. And it's what is underneath the water. What is underneath the water? Oh, well, I'm going to bet an avalanche because once you pick away at something like this, a lot of ugly, ugly secrets come out. Like, like I think I was talking about like the brain tree thing yesterday and it's like that they didn't charge anybody. And you're going to tell me that the one person that committed suicide was the only damn person that friggin' had anything to do with stealing guns, drugs, and money 
from an evidence room that magically all of a sudden had no, you're going to tell me that an evidence room had no camera. I'm just not buying that. I'm sorry. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not buying that brain tree. I'm not, you guys had a it's nice police station. You're a part of the police station. Right. Like stop it. Like, and they didn't charge anyone. And you know, of course, brain tree residents were fucking highly agitated. Like you didn't charge anyone. I guarantee you if someone had the balls to dig deep enough, they would have found probably the whole department or probably most of the department had something dirty or knew something, which is why it was so quickly just swept and been like, oh, nope, nothing here. Just, you know, all set. We're good. Like one person killed themselves. So that's the scapegoat. That's our out right there. We'll yeah. just say that person did everything and call it a day. Like that's what they're doing. Oh, these three, these bad, bad men. They're bad. We know they're bad, bad, bad guys. And that's it though. I'm like yeah. no, there's more. Like, <laughs> and it's like the, this. Her the the lawsuit has been going on. This like there's been filings, all kinds of filings, and nobody knew. Right. And it's like that's what these guys want. They mm -hmm. want it to go away. That's what the police. That's what Stoughton PD wants. That's what the Massachusetts State Police want. That's what the Canton Police want. They want this to go away. Of course they do. Well, of course it, they do. It, no, we the as a public say have to say no. We're not yeah. gonna allow them to, you know, the police didn't treat Sandra as a person while she was alive. We're not gonna let her them continue to visit Again. her anymore. No, absolutely. It ends. No, it ends. Yeah, it, it should end. It should already have end. So he's still certified. Anyone who retires or resigns is still on the list. I also confirmed with a couple of other names that I know aren't working anymore. That's interesting. Thank you for thank you for checking. Um, I thought I saw a CC video of the evidence room. Oh, in, in Brantree, they have well, they have video now, but they claim back then that when it's stealing was happening, um, up the guns and the drugs and the money, that there was no, there was none. There was no camera. Which I'm like, how could there be no? camera like <laughs> that doesn't make any sense yeah. plus braintree is a town that had money like it wasn't something that they didn't have um can you hear my cigarettes i think those are them right there please but i mean that's the thing right here on the thing but i'm like i don't understand why in the actual hell no never mind i don't know what the hell they have um yeah the chief what the chief was fired over braintree well, that's the, yeah, the, the, uh, yeah, exactly. But if you look deeper into that, you're going to guarantee, you know, the evidence chick did unalive herself. But again, if you look deeper in that, you think the evidence chick's the only person that was stealing from that evidence room? No, no friggin' way in hell. Like, there's just not, the, I'm, I wouldn't believe that for one second if you paid me to believe it. Like, clearly, there, that's a, like, it, if you go into that, if, has anybody ever been in there to, like, get a report? I've been in there to get, like, an accident report and stuff when someone hit me in Braintree. Um, and they messed up my license plate. And for some reason, the Braintree PD took my license plate back then. Okay. Don't ask me why. No freaking idea. And so I went to go get it back. And I'm like, why do you guys have my license plate? Like, and they refused to give me a, a report because I was canceling those obviously and getting a new one. And the insurance is like, well, we're going to keep your insur insurance running. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to cancel my insurance because my car's totaled now. Like I, I'm not getting another car anymore. Like, so sorry, not sorry. So they would not give me a report that they took my license plate, right? So I asked for like the sergeant and I'm like, my insurance will not cancel until I have something from you saying you guys took my license plate. And they're like, yeah, we have it. I'm like, okay, well, well, we got to find it. It's, you know, okay, well, can you find it? Like, I need it. Like, well, just give me a report saying it was damaged and you like disposed of it because they're like, oh, we don't know if we disposed of it because, okay, first of all, I don't even know why you took it. Secondly, give me a report saying that you took it. They refused outright to give me any sort of report saying that they took my license plate. Why? I've never heard of such a thing. But when you go into that police station, there are freaking cameras everywhere. Or at least back then, there still was. Like when you walk in, there's the glass and you talk to them through the camera there camera there there's a door they walk through you can see the camera on the other side of the door like so you're gonna tell me there's cameras everywhere else in this goddamn building but the most important place hey yeah. and you're gonna tell me that only two people 
or only one, because they really didn't say like the chief was involved. It was just sort of like thrown out. Like, so two people are the only people involved in this whole scheme. No, I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure they do now, but not back then. You know, back then they, they did not have good cops there. They had some really, really bad ones back then. But yes, probably now they probably do. I think they did. I think they redid the police station again. I heard. I haven't seen it, but that's what I heard. But either way, if you guys think that there's just, you know, these three bad men, like I'm going to bet more people knew shit, more people were involved in this type of shit. And the problem is, is if we uncover that in some reports, which is why they're heavily redacted, which why they're, why they're, you know, oh, it's still open. First of all, if it's still open, what is it still open for? And how long do you think until it's closed? Because you can't just indefinitely keep it open forever and ever unless there's a reason it's not a murder that you're trying to solve. So what would be the yeah. reason of continuing to keep it yeah. open? The civil part might be, but you don't need to keep the criminal case part of it open if you're not doing, like the civil part is completely different. Like I want the unredacted information. So what is so, well, I what is so important? Unredact a lot of it because it, the, it was a minor being abused. That's like one when I one. filed for for the uh, Massachusetts State Report, because because I, I wanted specifically the interview that they did with Farwell, I wanted the interview that they did with Divine, and I wanted the interview they did with the other Farwell. And they said they can't because it was about a child being abused. Right, well, which which is probably another thing they're gonna freaking keep. I just wonder to myself, like. There's clearly an avalanche of stuff that they don't want people to know about. And it's like, how do you get your hands on it if they keep using it? And this is the problem, right? This is the problem. Like, is, oh, it's so open. We can't have it. Give it to you. Like, oh, it was a minor. So, like, we're going to redact stuff. Like, but you don't actually know that that's what they're redacting at all. Or if they're just redacting things they don't want you to know about. Yeah. That's the hard part. Like. Yeah. The it, video. It, 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 it. <sighs> With it being police officers, it's like how much, how much are they, how much, how far are they going to go to protect them? And clearly, we see, you know, uh, the fact that they didn't get the DNA, or they haven't shown that they got the DNA from Farwell to prove it was his baby, yeah, is bananas. Like, because if it was any other guy. We would have taken it. What about the DNA? Yeah, they Maury could've... said, you are or you're not the father. <laughs> like, <laughs> And they could have easily, they didn't have to get it. They could have they could have walked up to his vehicle and swabbed the, the, the handle. There are ways you can get DNA without getting DNA from the person. But oh, yeah. a judge, if they brought that video to a judge, he would have signed it that day. Oh, absolutely. 100%. 100%. 100%. You know. They had probable cause to get his DNA. No, I'm not saying there's a bunch of people involved. What I'm saying is you would find other things that people did, basically. Like, not, it doesn't even have to pertain to this case, but you would find other things that people did that they weren't supposed to do or some sort, like, that's what you would find. It's not going to be like, you know, these three are the only ones that have done anything illegal or unethical in there. Like that's, they don't want you digging that far. There's a reason for that. Like if this person told this person something and they know that this person did something, now this person's going to be quiet. Otherwise they're both ratted out. Like, so when these people are exposed, now it exposes everyone else who's done something they're not supposed to. Right. Like, and they don't want you digging in that. The mass state police sure as fuck doesn't want you digging in that. There's already been enough over there, they don't want you looking in their doors. That's for damn sure. Like they're like, oh, nothing to see here, everyone. Like, <laughs> why do you think Canton PD is fighting so hard to not get this audit that they're, audit. the town's trying to push for? Like, come on, dude. Like that doesn't make any sense. Like, and that that audit pertains to this case too. Yeah. So, any lives in Canton, please make sure you go to that meeting that they're going to have on the twentieth. Yes. On because you need to vote that you want an audit. The, the police stations should be audited all the time, every few years. You know, it because of these reasons, you know, but this this Canton Canton needs to be audited to make sure that they did everything correctly correctly in this 100%. case. Hundred percent they do. 
read the article written by the Abington cop who committed suicide. She said, power and greed caused it. I wonder if he knew about this. Well, I mean, probably. I'm going to say probably. Um, when I was listening to the case again this tonight, they said that they talked to a bunch of people from Abington. And he, he used to tell people all the time about what, what happened with Sandra. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. Like that's that's that means that he clearly wanted to talk about it with someone, but probably some ones he thought was gonna keep his, you know, yeah stuff quiet. Like sad. It's just it's sad that the you know obviously we if I look at it with with her death, if you're somebody who doesn't think she committed suicide because that's what you're being told, even if she didn't do it herself if she did it herself or he did i'm sorry whether she did it or he did it he caused it right so if i personally believe she was murdered but if she wasn't he did it he's the right. reason why she's dead the abuse that she suffered from these guys and she might not have understood that she was suffering from these guys Probably the not. abuse that occurred you know, it is why she is dead. That's why there's a lawsuit. That's why the lawsuit hasn't been thrown out. Oh, absolutely. That lawsuit's not going to get thrown out, dude. There's so way too much to prove that, like, oh, I know. clearly improper things happen. And clearly she was, I mean, she's no longer alive. The bottom line. Like, and that's a wrongful yeah. death suit. That's absolutely a wrongful death suit. I just wish that the family, you know, wouldn't say to other people, like, if other people in the family feel a certain way, like, then they feel a certain way. That's their right to feel that way. It's their right to speak out if they want to. The aunt's attorney can tell the aunt what she can and can't say, but you certainly can't just be telling everybody else in the family what they can and can't feel or can and can't say. And I mean, they have more resolve than me because if that was my goddamn aunt's attorney, I would have told them where to go and how to get there fairly quickly. Like <laughs> we've already discussed, I would have, uh, you know, already said that to him too. Yeah. <laughs> And they're trying to respect her aunt. Her aunt is the executor of her estate. I yep. get it. I, I get it. It's just, I'm too outspoken of a person. And my family knows they wouldn't be able to keep me quiet. Nope. Me neither. Um, not gonna but as I was saying, whether Sandra did this herself, and again, I don't believe she killed herself. But if she did, he caused it. He abused her since she was 13 yep. for 10 years of this young woman's life. She was abused yep. by this man and these men because the, the abuse that occurred with the other others, you know, yep. they all abused their power. 100%. You, know, they, you know, the amount of times that they were texting her while on duty you know, they would mm. meet up with her on duty. So that their abuse of power attributed to her death. Oh, 100%. 100%. The other, the other two, the other three, I should say. Whether or not Matthew is the one who put his hands around her throat or she hung herself, he caused her to die that night. And like I said, I personally think he did it but even if he wasn't the one even if he didn't he's the reason why she's gone today 100 percent, he is and all the rest of them too like i mean Definitely. william farwell ratted his brother out dude ratted his brother out he told the cops yes sandra told me that that was my brother's baby like they, they he told me like bottom line he told me so yeah. i mean that right there should have given them more than enough to go and get that DNA and say, first of all, let's talk about for a second because I totally forgot about this. And this is kind of important because when they went through the forensics, the digital forensics of, you know, the computer, the phones, like all that fun stuff. Who do we think went through it, everyone? <laughs> Trooper Nick Garino. Yeah, Trooper Garino. The guy that took the four hour damn class. The guy that literally clearly has no idea how to get deleted things from Celebrite. And a celebrate report because he missed it not only in this case but in the Karen Reed case as well. But what do those two cases have in common? Cops. <laughs> Cops. 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 Because it seems like 
the Massachusetts State Police know how to find forensics when it has to do with other cases. Mm -hmm. 100%. So why is it only when it's police officers that they can't find the answers? Yeah. Especially since they to. were able to go through her computer because her phone was connected to her computer and they had all the text messages for for the that past year with Farwell. Yep. Yep. So that's why they went and they they pulled his phone. They got they got a warrant pull his phone and his work phone. Right. But why didn't you guys find clearly this man does not know how to do forensics data. That's my point. So why is the man still in a position to be doing any forensics at the state police? Anything? I'm exactly. sorry. You missed forensics in two cases of deleted things, which means you clearly have no idea how to do stuff. Any other job, your ass would have been fired or at least at the very least retrained. None exactly. of that has happened. Exactly. Why? Oh, that's right. Because then cases would start going down in fire flames exactly. and questions would start being asked. <laughs> And they can't, like, they can't, because they have two pro high-profile cases right now that yep. they can't take a chance on. Anybody ever notice that the forensics that they're using in the Walsh case seem to be just fine? Like, <laughs> And the forensics, the Apple, uh, Apple phone data. case is perfect in the other case. Just isn't the same in the Karen Reed case. Yeah. It, that it's bugs not, me. It doesn't work in the Karen Reed case because, you know, that's not reliable. But it's you guys are saying it's reliable in this case. So why? It's because they're covering up for police officers. Well, that's my belief. That's my full belief is that even if you could say, you know, with like the Karen Reed case, even if you could say like maybe she hit him, you are never going to prove that she did it on purpose. OK, I'm sorry. It's not going to freaking happen. I don't believe that she hit him because and I'm going to go over this when I do this other case here that I have that you guys, it basically mirrors what happened to John with some differences. Um, but you're not going to tell me that a car didn't leave any damage from here down. Like, oh, yeah. that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, <laughs> yeah, he does not have the bruising of somebody who was hit. No. And, and so we're talking about the forensic guy that can't, get anything when it comes to cops, but can get things when it comes to no cops being involved. And, and that just speaks volumes to me that clearly, even if you're just trying to cover up from one small thing that they did, you're covering something. What are you covering? Like exactly something's being covered and you can't go and say in one breath that these forensics. And if you watch the Murdoch case, you watch them say how precise. And I remember the word precise and reliable celebrate data and apple health data is and then out of the other side of your mouth say well just not in these cases it's yeah. only good in the case we want it to be good in it's just not in these yeah. cases. <laughs> i mean it's it's the it's what the system that law enforcement uses across the board right celebrate it's it's yeah. what they use and you're trying to tell us that in these two cases oh it magically no it magically we can't do it Hmm. So ridiculous. Like, I wonder why. I wonder what is wrong with these two cases. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cops. Covering for other cops. What pisses me off is like they insult the intelligence of every single person that looks into these cases. And I love when they use the term armchair detective or FYI, armchair detectives have solved more cases that you guys have been had that were cold for years by looking into them. Just saying. Like, <laughs> so you use it as a term as if it's, you know, hurtful or something to people who are trying to help because you guys can't do your fucking jobs or you're not doing it on purpose or you're lazy or you, you know, didn't do an investigation correctly. I mean, I'm sorry. How fast they said, this was a suicide for Sandra. It doesn't work like that, dude. You don't just go in and go, yep, suicide, done now. Not even with my dad did they do that, dude. Mm -hmm. Okay? And my dad was a clear suicide. They still investigated to make sure something else didn't happen to him. And going along with this about how they treat police officers different, 
Matthew Farrow was interviewed. She was found on the 4th. He was interviewed on the 6th. So Saturday, the 6th. He was interviewed in a parking lot of the high school. Of course. If it was you or I, we would have been brought into the station. If we were, you know, they'd seen the video of him leaving. Yep. So if, if I was the person leaving her apartment, I would have been brought to the station and been sat down and been in there grilled for hours. 100%. 100, hours and hours of questions. It wouldn't have been in the comfort of wherever I wanted it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He was was questioned in the parking lot of the high school. Why? Why wasn't he treated like a criminal that he is? Also, why the high school of all goddamn places? Yeah. Just wondering. Like, of all yeah. places on planet Earth that you could have questioned them in, you thought it was an appropriate place at a high school. <laughs> like, yeah. And I, th- I had thought, like, when I was, when I, because, you know, I sit there and analyze things. And before I had thought about it, because I was like, well, he's a, maybe he was on duty and they were, they were just parked there. And then I realized, I was like, wait a minute, he's not a patrolman. Mm-hmm. He's, he's a detective. Mm-hmm. So he would be in the office. Mm-hmm. He's riding around in a patrol car all the time. Right. That doesn't make sense. So, or he was out on the road. Even if he was out on the road, you pull into a high school. That's the place that they, that that's yeah. where you're supposed to meet was a high school. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, what? Like, no. It makes you're no sense. perfectly comfortable where he was. Bottom line. Like, sloppy joes. And, and they didn't even like it was like a quick interview. It wasn't like they, they didn't it wasn't like they showed, oh, we asked him this. I mean, they asked him questions, but it was like they asked him when they last when he last saw her and um and you know, because they saw the video. He's like how he found out. He said he found out the day before on the fifth. Well, if if he wasn't the one who did it, who told him? Right. That's my question. And my right. question, even still, even still, if he wasn't the person who did it, who told him? Because somebody right, who told, him? Have told who him, tipped him off <laughs> that, hey, you know, that, that chick you were dating, she, she they found her dead. Who, right. who told him? Was it somebody in the Canton Police Department? Because he's a detective. So you would think that he interacts with the Canton Police Department. Right. Especially since yeah. he has to go to the 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 Stoughton court system. They go to the Stoughton court system. So you would think they. I've been told by somebody uh, that they are very very chummy there. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a shocker. They have a Stoughton courthouse. Mm-hmm. Like you know, and they go in and out of there for different things. So it's yeah. like, so it's like, what? why? Who told him? Who told him that Sandra was dead? Oh, someone told him. That's for damn sure. Someone mm-hmm. definitely 100% told him and shouldn't have because, hi, your girlfriend was just found dead. Like, yeah, there's no reason on planet Earth anyone should have told him. He should have been investigated just if he was the last person to see her alive. Exactly. Like, you know, like, exactly. come on now. Like, that's, I mean, that's utterly ridiculous. Like, it's stupidness. And like I said, I'm going to keep fighting for her. Um, I can't remember if there's any other parts of the story that I really needed to touch upon, but See I... If anybody has any questions, I think we covered most of it, honestly. But yeah, if anybody has any questions, that would be great. Um, yeah, let's see. Any of you guys got questions on this? Because this is the best person you got to answer them for you. Like, <laughs> so if you got a question... Now would be the time. I've I've dove into this case, but not as deep as her. So you want the, the answer to your question? Now would be the time to ask it. <laughs> and I've talked to a lot of people, like who knew her, and just you know friends and people who were classmates or people who were in the program. Um, you know, if anybody watching this was in the program please reach out to me. I would love to know more information about that. I have talked to some people in the program. I talked to the mother of a boy who was in the program, but I'm trying to gather all the information I can because there's a lot. 
Yeah. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of things I think we all still don't know. And that kind of irks me a little too, because you can, you, you can clearly tell that there's stuff that like, because it leads that way, right? Like you follow the trail, right? And the trail leads that way. And then there's just this dead end. And you're like, there's something on the other side of this dead end that I need to know. Like, and I yeah. want it. Because <laughs> like, if you think about like, if he was just going in there to break up with her, why did he walk in so shady? Right. Like a normal person, if they were, they were going in to break up with their girlfriend or boyfriend, they wouldn't walk in all head down, you know, like, like no, they were just walk in like a normal person. That wasn't walking in like a normal person. No, not by a long shot. He knew he was hiding himself for exactly. a reason. And also, you also don't do it like, maybe you do it long before your wife's about to have a baby. Not like when your wife's in the hospital. That's like the stupid, like, you wait till your wife's in the hospital to break up with your mistress, basically, is what you're going to call. All right? So, you do that? That's what you do? What's it? It, and just and how he left, how he booked it out of there. Oh yeah. He didn't just walk like a normal person. No, he walked pretty pretty fast and made sure to get out of there as fast as he could. I also believe he was there earlier in the day and he just didn't come in that door where the cameras were. Because if you see her come in, you can see sort of like a figure almost standing outside the door that never comes in through the doors where the cameras are. Well, she got food. I know that. Maybe that's what it was, but Possibly. I'm like, you no. can see like someone's clearly standing outside the door, but they never yeah. come in through the doors where the cameras are. Like they must have either, like either it was like a food delivery and they're not going to come in yeah. or someone knew not to come in because there's cameras there and they weren't fully prepared and covered. <laughs> like very possible. That's, that's definitely very possible. That's that, that's mm -hmm. a good question. Cause that's the only place they really had cameras was in that entryway. Which is so frustrating. Like, so yeah. frustrating. Like, I have cameras inside and outside of my house on purpose. You know, like, there's woods behind my house. So, you know, sketchy things happen in the woods, man. It scares me. Like, so I have cameras inside and outside my house. So if someone murdered me, like, you're going to see someone's either unplugging the camera or you're going to catch the murderer, one or the other. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, like, I want to know the neighbors, like, there was no mention of the neighbors. Yeah. Did you even ask the neighbors anything? Like, <laughs> as far as I can tell, nobody was asked. Um, I think they touched upon it on the case, but I can't remember what they said. I think they tried to talk to the neighbors, but I, I'm not, I don't re remember 100%. Um, yeah. But, you know, every person in that building should have been talked to. Yeah. 100%. I wonder <laughs> now if, because you can get, I have a way of, figuring out who lived in that building at the time that she was there. It'll give me like the addresses and the names. Like, and I wonder if we can go down the list of people and, and call them and be like, Hey, like, do you remember anything about this? Like, do you know, because maybe someone did hear something like, and sometimes it happens like years later where they're like, Oh, I remember this thing. And now it makes sense that I saw it on TV. And then I know about the case. Like, there's this one thing that like, I just thought nothing of at the time. And now it makes sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, it sounded like a cat, but what it probably was is someone crying. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like something stupid like that, like where li years later and they see the case, they're like, Oh shit, I lived in that building. Oh shit. That's must've been what I heard. Like, and they don't go forward because again, this involves cops. Like this isn't something they're just going to run to the cops about and be like, Hey, yeah. hi, I remember something over here. Like they don't No, They don't want to be the next person unalived. So no. Yeah. Yeah. And when like when cops are involved, it's it's it's, it's a whole nother level because it's like, who do you go to? Who do you go to? You go to the attorney general. Maybe someone in that office knows a cop like they tip them off. So you don't even go there. That's the problem. Like, it's like you don't go anywhere. You go to someone like me or you who is like not going to talk to the cops like and who's just trying to figure out what happened here and get some goddamn justice. Like she and, deserves justice. Her family and, deserves justice. Exactly. Exactly. And I can understand being scared. Um, because like I was saying earlier, um, you know, Fanning called me, but I had left my number. Yeah. Well, I don't know how the, I mean, I know how, cause he looked me up, but I don't right. know how the deputy chief in Stoughton got my number. He looked me up. So yeah. they were looking into me. Yeah. 
they were see they, you'd see that's what they did they used sieges no they used sieges and they looked you up yep so it's like you know that's scary but that is scary <laughs> but you know i don't do anything i've never been arrested so it's like dude, why the hell are you looking me up like a creep dude that's weird like he, he wanted to contact me about the rally we were having but <clears throat> And I know they monitor the page because he said, yeah, yeah they, they knew exactly the route we were going to take. He's like, I right. know that you were going to park. You guys were going to park over at the supermarket. Why don't you guys park here? I'll, I'll, I'll clear it with the, um, the town for you guys to park here. And in my head, I was like, really? Why are you so being so helpful? About the page. Page. I mean, they're probably monitoring the page to see if something drops. And also if, maybe somebody comes forward because if you know if see the thing is the thing with with canton and stoughton and the massachusetts state police they would be doing themselves a favor if they charged yeah the farwells and divine they would be doing themselves a favor if they charged brian elbert because it, for for the the john o'keefe because it, it it shows that you're doing your job and you're no gonna put away crooked cops and you guys washed your hands of the the shady dirty people and the that's only reason the they wouldn't though is if they did and those people knew information and they would talk oh yeah oh, oh trust me i understand that i understand I think about it all the time. I think about why, why, why the why. So if your phone number doesn't come up in Sieges, I wonder where they would have gone. I mean, they have the to have like sort of five. It is because when I talked to Finn and I told him we were having a rally, he could have given my number. Yeah, that's the only other way I, he could have given my number, but gotten my number. But I thought it was weird. That is weird. That is a little strange. Like, that's strange. I didn't know Sieges didn't have the number. I've never used Sieges, though, so I have no idea. But, I mean, there's they got to have some sort of system where they hold phone numbers. Like, they have to do reports, too. Like, that, you know, they ask you for your name and your number and stuff. And Yeah. But also, my my phone is a prepaid phone. Mine ah. is. So, that's where, like, my mine is through that uh, straight talk. Oh, yeah, straight talk. Yeah. So, it's a prepaid, so it's not a regular phone system. It's a burner phone. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yep. That's weird. That's yeah. Unless he probably got it from Fanny. Again, they're probably very friendly, you know, between the two. I find it funny though, that they contacted you before the rally. Like what was the safety concern there? Like what was the, Well, they, I think they wanted to know how many people were going to be there. And unfortunately it rained. Oh. So I got sick and I wasn't even able to go. Oh. I got wicked sick. So, and I got my friend sick. I was, I was down in Massachusetts and I, I was going to take, a, a lift to to Canton uh, to Canton, and then we were gonna go to Stoughton. Right, and I got wicked sick. I, I yeah, and my friend, <laughs> I got her husband sick, and then he, she got sick, Ugh. and I wasn't able to go. It's, and because of the rain, because it was one of those weekends that rained, only a few people showed up. Ah, uh, well, then we need to do another one, a different one. Definitely, I'm thinking about. Um, I gotta think about it. The day of the canton meeting maybe the 20th yeah maybe start at uh at the uh stoughton like 4 30 yeah do there and then go over to the canton thing but i gotta i don't know i gotta think about it i gotta yeah that wouldn't be a bad idea are you gonna, they are they're they're already gonna be pro maybe protesting in canton the canton thing so yeah so if they're already there maybe they can pop over and also help out with sandra i mean i would why not like i absolutely would that's i mean again there's not as much attention on sandra's case as there is the other case but at the same time sandra was a person exactly she might not be alive anymore but her and her baby were people and they deserve someone to speak for them and someone to stand their ground and say, we're not okay with this just being left the way it is. Something isn't right here. The last person to see her alive was her abuser, groomer, boyfriend, who she did not answer a single person after he entered her apartment. That and, and, and the, To go along with that, 
Sandra was a talker. She oversheared and she would, she knew she could have called her cousin. Her cousin lived on the West coast. So, you know, that late, cause it was around nine, you know, when he left, it was around nine 50, you know, she might not, maybe not, might not have wanted to call anybody else. Well, she could have called her cousin. Yep. Their cousin was on the West Coast. She could have Snapchatted her friend and been like, I need to talk. Yep. You know, there are people who she could have talked to. And Sandra was always on her phone. She was an oversharer. Why wouldn't she share about this? No, no kidding. Like, if you were upset, the first thing I'm going to, the first thing I do is I'm going to call someone and I'm going to share. Like, what the hell I'm so upset about? Exactly. I need to get it out. And I might even say it 75 times because that's what I need to do to get it off my chest. But before I do anything, the first thing I'm doing is dialing someone like, this is what happened. What an asshole or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. Like, you know, I just got in, in a car act, whatever. Like the first thing I'm doing is going, you'll never believe what just happened. Like, yeah. And to, to make matters worse. Sorry. I just lost, lost the rest of my chain of thought. Um, yeah, she, I mean, she she didn't call anyone. That's weird. Like, Oh, that, be, that's you know. what I was going to say. Yeah. That's one of the things that I asked Fanning. I said, did her phone stop moving when, she, when he left? Because to me, for somebody who was on their phone all the time or always had it in her hand, her phone should have been moving right. when he left. And he right. said, yes. And I wish he could have seen my face when he said yes. I know. Because I was like, you know, I did that like, okay, buddy. And I said, Are well. Are you just saying that? Like, yeah. I said, well, that's not suspicious. And he said, they think she did it right then. And I said, okay. And the other thing about her phone, I thought it was, thought it was weird that they said that her phone was you know because she was seated was like about 12 inches away from her away from her leg and away from her hand so it was wasn't like right next to her and yeah, but 12 inches ain't that far a foot you know and i was wondering if if it was almost she was put trying like to reach to be like a lot if she woke up she wouldn't be able to just reach her phone. She, I mean, my friend was like, yeah, but she would have been able to do it with her leg, but you'd be in a panic. You might not think, yeah. you know, and she could have been just, if she had woken up, right. She might have been reaching for her phone, but I don't, well, think I mean, up. not unless he knew she was dead. Like that's, I know she's dead, but again, full disclosure, even my father called the house phone from the basement where he killed himself before he did it. Mm -hmm. He called and wanted to talk to his then girlfriend who was, had brought their daughter, my little sister to the bus stop. And my other sister <laughs> Taylor said, she's not here. She brought Katie to the bus stop. And my dad was like, no, she's there. And my sister's like, no, she's brought." And my, they didn't know he was in the basement. So yeah. even my dad reached called out someone yeah. before he did what he did. Like that makes more sense, right? Like, I guess that was sort of his last ditch effort to like have someone talk him out of it or like think that like he didn't feel so hurt or whatever it was that he was feeling at that moment. Like at least he still tried to do something like you're going to tell me your phone was moving and it was about 12 inches away from her and she never touched it after he left. Yeah. And full disclosure to your audience that when I was 13, I tried to kill myself. I swallowed a bunch of, I, I, this is one thing I said to Fanning. I said, I understand the complexities of the mind and how you can decide that moment that you're just going to kill yourself. Yep. It does happen because it happened. Yep. Sure I does. Up that morning to go to school. And I was like, I'm going to kill myself today. You know, I was 13. Mm -hmm. I went and as funny as a child, I wasn't able to swallow pills. My mom, my mom, my mommy had to crush them up for me and put them in applesauce. That mm -hmm. didn't. Put I, Swallowed like a hundred pills. It was children's aspirin. And cause I was 13, I was, you know, I did swallow some pills. I don't know what they were. Yeah. I swallowed a bunch of Tylenol. I swallowed a lot of pills yeah. and I told my brother. So if I, my brother called my mom at work and he put, she gave me 
he put me, she put the, he gave me the phone so I could talk to her and she started yelling at me. She's like, then my brother left for school. It's so weird. That whole, this whole situation is weird. My brother left for school. I mean, we were, he was in elementary school. So he doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. And my mom was like, what did you do that for? And she's like, go to school. And I'm like, so I had to walk to school. No, no. <laughs> and I got to school and I threw up all over the bathroom. I feel bad for whoever I had to clean that up, but I got the pills out of my system. Yeah. But I said to him, you know, I understand those complexity complexities of the mind and you can decide in, in a split moment that you're going to kill yourself. So I, cool. I said, I will concede that that is a possibility that she could have done that. Cause I do analyze the situation that if there's a possibility she did, I said, but she wanted this child, this child was going to love her. And that's all this girl wanted was somebody to love her. Yep. And I don't believe she would have killed this baby. No, that's another thing. She wasn't going to have an abortion for this man. You think I'm going to kill myself yeah. and the baby. And she was Catholic and she was a practicing Catholic. That's a big sin to kill yourself. In, in sure Catholic. is. So sure it's is. like, I don't believe she did it. And I said that to him. I said, I didn't say the part about the Catholicism. I said, but. I said, but I don't think she would have went through with it. I don't think she would have done it. Because but think about it. What you just said, you took those pills and you told your brother. That's yeah. what they mean when they say there's an automatic reaction of you to be like, shit, uh oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Yes. Even with hanging, it they try to stop it at some point. Even if they can't, they at least try. That's why sometimes you'll see like you know, gouge marks at the neck. Yeah. And that was one of the things they said there was no marks. There was no, no, nothing in her system, no drugs in her system. And I said, yeah, but if he did it, there wouldn't be claw marks. He could over, I mean, all he had to do was sit up and sit on her. All he had to do was make sure her hands were down and there would have been no way for her to do that. Yes. Like it, he, he was almost twice her height. He you was know, he, he was, he was a massive man. He's a massive man. Yeah. She was pint sized. Yeah. It's like there, he would have been able to overpower her pretty easily. And my abuser used to do it, and he wasn't even that much bigger than me. You know what I mean? It, it, and in the case, I haven't been able to find any information on this, but on the podcast, the case, they said that that there was a necklace found on the floor, possibly a necklace found on the floor. And I, I believe, I don't know if it was in the case, but somebody else told me this too. And I think they did say it in the case that there was semen in her underwear. So did he have sex with her? This is my thing. Did he have sex with her? And that's how he caught her off guard. And that's Could the thing. They, they, was she, they didn't say what she was wearing when she was found. Yeah. They didn't say, was she nude? Was she, you know... Was she clothed? Was she clothed? Because a lot of times when you kill yourself, you still you still don't want to be naked. No. No. Nope. You, know? you don't people want people to find you that way. That's why. Like that. And even it's a weird mental thing that even in death, you don't want to, you still want to protect your pet, protect yep. yourself like that, even when you're killing yourself. Yep. So I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's a hundred percent true. I don't know if there was a necklace found on the floor because they say there's no struggle, but if there was a neck, a broken necklace found on the floor, that is the struggle. That is the struggle because she wouldn't have broken her own necklace. Just what is she going to pull? Like it doesn't make exactly. any sense. And the mm -hmm. other thing that tipped me off was the fact that they said that it was just tied so tightly around her neck and that doorknob. And I'm sorry, but as a fun size, you know, person with not a ton of strength myself, like, uh, there's no way I could have tied it as tight as they're saying that it was tied with the strength of, of a woman. Like I just, it's not going to happen. Well, I don't even, I don't think, I don't necessarily like the women, woman part. It's just the, how do you tie it around your, your neck and the, the doorknob, like to be able to do it. Cause to be able to, to do it, you have, she would have had to be seated. So yeah, they basically said there was no slack. So how is there no slack if she's sitting? Exactly. To, to be able to do that. And like, right. I, I, I don't know how it's feasibly possible. Well, and I don't, I don't have those type of doorknobs. And um, none of my friends do. If I find somebody, not that I I'm going to like hang myself, 
But I know you could attempt to tie it and see how tight, you know, how, how I want to like kind of walk through it. It's hard to walk right. through it if you have the other door, if you have a regular doorknob, if you don't right. have handles, it's hard to walk through the mechanics of how she was found. Like these doorknobs like that. These are exactly what have my, so my mother has these at her house actually. And my daughter's service dogs, you know, use them to open the doors and stuff. And this part right here around the knob there, that part moves too. So if you tied something around it and you had enough force, it would move. It would so that's why I'm like, it didn't move. Because like it, the hanging that she, that she, the form of hanging she did, she would be putting pressure. So she would yeah. be leaning forward. Right. So it and just so, makes no, it makes no sense to me. No, at least at the very least, the one that was tied around her neck would have moved up or down either in the back of the neck or the front of the neck. Because once you've leaned forward all the way, now it's either getting tighter and it's going to move a little up or a little down. Exactly. Either it's on the back of the neck, you're going to see some sort of mark for it. Like, yeah, you can literally open them with your pinky. Right. Like, it just don't make a ton of sense. And so for me, it's like they clearly didn't. I mean, we already know they didn't do a thorough investigation when it came to this. We're like, all right, good, suicide, done, end of story. Exactly. Rubber stamp that shit. Like, that's what they did. Like, Morrissey himself was like, yep, it's suicide. Like, I'm sorry, what? Since when does the DA just come out and say it's this or it's that in any other case? Like, uh, what? Yeah. that's That was weird to me, too. Like, does Morrissey come out in every, uh, you know, case where it's a suicide and say, yep, it was a suicide? No, he does not. So, like, why the hell was that the case here? It it makes no sense. Like I said, when I did the virtual tour of her building and they they showed those fixtures, I was like, oh, hell no. Yeah, no. Oh, no, no. There's no way. There uh -huh. is no way. No. And they didn't Especially describe it either as a doorknob. They, I think they called it like a doorknob. It's not a doorknob. That's not a doorknob. That's a door handle. Door handle. Right. <laughs> or a latch, if you will. You know, it unlatches and relatches. Yeah. I, nope. I was like, nope. It's very possible, cool mom. I what did she say? She said for a moment I thought maybe he did some freaky choking stuff during sex, and that's how he killed her. And they made it look like an accident. I mean, it's possible. It's plausible very possible we don't know what right like it's possible and plausible like you don't i mean that's could be I, that oh, well wait hold on the how killed her to, then made it look like but see i don't i'm not saying that he couldn't have been into some stuff like that right but i don't think it's too coincidental when it was happening right it was if if he killed her, which I believe it leads towards he did. He went there with purpose because why would he go there on a snowy night when his wife's in the hospital? His wife That's, is physically yeah. in the hospital because there's such a bad snowstorm. Right, and you're so why going to be gallivanting around? You know, I wouldn't. It's too suspicious to your wife. Why you'd be leaving anyway? Yeah, I'd be like, well, where do you think you're going? Like. But that's why I think she told him she to get yeah. rid of her, not to get physically get rid of her. No, like get her out of our lives. Get, get her out. Enough. I want her enough out of our lives. Yep. Yeah. And I, I think that was another pressure point on him. You know, Sandra was putting pressure on him to sign the birth certificate. She wanted him to be part of the life. She wanted money from him. Right. And the work was finding out that this, this girl's calling here causing problems and you take care of your girlfriend. So there was pressure at work because of it. Yeah. You know, take care of your it. personal shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Drama at work. And then now this, right. You know, he was, she was like, I, I, I don't know. I can't confirm or deny whether that was said, but it, to me, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, why yeah. he would go there that night. If, yeah. If that's what, okay. well, yeah. Because why else would you leave your wife? at the hospital while she may or may not give birth while she's there in a snowstorm to go tell your girlfriend you're cutting it off. You had many other opportunities to do that before that baby was born. Exactly. Like, come on, dude. Cool mom says, yeah, but I don't think he wanted her to know he was trying to kill her until that moment. Her was choking. 
he was choking her during sex. I mean, maybe would they don't tell us whether she was clothed or not. That's another weird thing. Usually they tell you like, you know, they were wearing, you know, long sleeve sweatshirt and pants or whatever. Like, even we know what my dad was wearing when he committed suicide. Like, we know what he was wearing. Like, bottom line, it's in the report. Like, why isn't that in, in the report that we can see? Yeah. It, 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 there's, like I said at the beginning, when we were talking about when they couldn't describe, there wasn't a consensus about what was what she hung herself with. What she used, right. You need to, when you read a police report, if people are digging into these kind of things and you see inconsistencies, that's when you got to stop and say something's wrong here. And right. that, that that's from the beginning you know yeah that's that's the beginning of the reports mm -hmm. you know it, they couldn't even get it right at the beginning and they knew we know someone tipped him off so who there very well could have been a big conversation about hey um by the way we just found your girlfriend dead so uh what do you want us to say like yeah and like i said lank and divine graduated together I don't even know how Lank's still an officer because he's a proven liar. So how is he still an officer writing any sort of report that anyone could ever believe? But if, like I said, if he, the way he, he wrote that was crafty because he wasn't oh, saying, course. he wasn't saying I am saying what's on it. Kotar so told him. Mm. Why are you writing a report saying, I could see him saying, yeah, Kotar called me and said she hung herself. And, and told me blah 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 around her neck, and then when I got there, I visually confirmed that wow, she had a black strap around her neck. I could like, see why? Him that way, but he never a whole said report that he saw. He he said right. he went in the apartment. He said he went in the room. He said he said all this. So why is he saying Kotar said it, not him? Right. That's, so that's another thing. If you were actually there, you would have told you that Kotar said this. This person said this while I was there. That person said that. And then myself, I saw X, Y, and Z. That's usually how the report is written because yeah. you still have to put, it's supposed to be facts, no fluff. Like, so basically it's just supposed to be what you saw and heard while you were there, including what other people said to you while you were there. So why is there nothing about what you yourself saw unless you purposely left that out on purpose? Exactly. And, and because he's the supervisor, he is getting report. You know, they did call him and say, hey, yep. we found her deceased. Yep. But he could have just said that and mm -hmm. then said they found her hanging. She hung herself. He could right. have said they found her and they said she hung herself. And then when I went, I saw that she hung herself with whatever item it is. Right. But you have the these officers who can't even say what it is because none of them agree. That's suspect to me. Like no one in my dad's report was like, it might have been rope. Like it was rope. My dad hung himself with rope. Like they they all consensus that it was a rope. They all confirmed visually that it was rope. Like he hung himself with a rope. He also left suicide notes. <laughs> suicide notes, which we don't see here either. You don't think she would have left something for someone anyone you would think but then again she might not uh, to play devil's advocate she might not have because her closest family was all gone true but to be fair i don't have a ton of family either though but my friends are like family to me they're blood like i don't care what anybody says like they are family so if i didn't have any family left the closest person to me, my closest friend to me would be that person that got that damn letter. Like if I had no kids and no family, like whoever it was that I talked to every day and everyone has someone they talk to, right? Even if it's a coworker, like I leave someone something like, Hey, you can have my left sock and you can have my right shoe, but I'm putting yeah. it in there. Right. Like, yeah, I, I just, I, she wanted this child. That bugs me so it, much. It, it's like she could have just had an abortion to appease him. And, and she, she wouldn't. It. So why would she kill her herself? Because it, it, you think of it. They had broken up a few times before. They, yep. Especially since they, they had an incident a few weeks before where he shoved her. Well, what is this the one where he like took her phone or something? What's the deal with the yeah. phone? I think, and I think because she was threatening to tell his wife or something. Yep. 
Yeah, that's what happened. Well, supposedly, and, but, but yeah. his brother ended up telling the wife. Yep. So, and that that's weird too. Why would his brother do that? That that that's another thing I would like to unpack. Like, what was going why on? is your brother telling on yeah. you? That's but, weird. Unless your brother has some weird infatuation with one woman or the other, then they tell on each other like it's going out of style, and sometimes yeah. even make shit up. Yeah, that's true. It, it's just a weird that's there's weird play there, but she wouldn't get rid of this child when he was begging her to. Mm -hmm. Why would she kill herself when she was telling people, I don't think me and him are going to be together anymore. I'm ready to do this by myself. And she told many people she was prepared to do it by herself with yes. that baby with or without him. Yes. And so for me, that's like, okay. She so, didn't, and I'll, I had a baby young. I had a baby even younger than her. I had my daughter three days after my 18th birthday and my kid was born with her disease. So like those symptoms started happening probably when she was like a month old. And so, you know, and, and her father was my abuser. So it's like, I went sort of through the same thing and I was fully prepared to do it myself with a kid and did do it myself with a kid that had a, a rare disease. Like, and you're broken. Like that baby loves you no matter what. Like, she was broken, just like I was. That baby would have been something that could have changed her life and something that would have loved her regardless. Exactly. And I just exactly. am like, I have a hard time getting past the fact that she was pregnant and killed herself in a sitting position and answered no calls and no texts and no Snapchats after he arrived at her house. Like, I just not, I can't get past that. Like, there's nothing you can tell me especially with my dad committing suicide. I know the way that like, it's supposed, like not supposed to present itself because everybody's different, but like, yeah, there's certain red flags. There's certain things that like are, are generalized in most people that have that sort of mental health where they're going to or feel they need to kill themselves. Like been there, like been there. I've had those thoughts. Like I was, again, I was abused. Hello. So it, there's also like people, they, they, they in a roundabout way, tell people or give little hints, like, that they're just not feeling so hot, like their mental health ain't great, like whatever it is, there's always some little tidbit. And I see none of that, nothing, not even a smidgen of it. Like she did have mental health issues. Well, yeah, she I did. Want to say that she did have mental health issues. She was yeah. seeing a killer, yeah. but that the suicide mean, stuff that does you gonna commit suicide. No, there are PTSD millions, and CPTSD in the country who have mental health issues. I am one of them. Yep. You know, I did try when I was 13. Um, I have a lot of health issues that really came to head in 2010. And there were days that I, if I, I really wanted to jump off yeah. a bridge, it's hard, dude. I thought about it. I didn't do it. Do it. And right. I just don't feel like that she did this. Right. I, I don't either. And that's just like the feeling that I get from this is that like, I, I have CPTSD, PTSD, anxiety, panic, like all that from like, you know, being abused and like, you know, having gone through it basically. And, you know, obviously there's times in my life where I've contemplated it and tried once. And that was when you, like when you said I was a teenager, I was before I was even pregnant with my daughter. Um, but and bullying is a big thing too, when you're younger. And like, that was a part of a part of it. And I was already just so broken, but like, again, there are little red flags, like mental health doesn't mean you're going to kill yourself. Like it doesn't, I've had CPTSD and PTSD since I was probably 17 or younger. Um, 17 is the, you know, first I can remember of like being hyper aware and all that stuff, but I'm, I'm sh almost positive. It was much longer. And I've never, you know, since, since I was, a kid contemplated suicide like that's that's and my dad gave off signals there were things that we missed obviously all of the time you miss them and and i i look for those in this case and i just don't see them they're not there like they're they don't they're not existent like she just got a carriage for this baby her friend just bought her a brand new carriage she had her house stocked with clothes and things for this baby like that day a, a car seat was delivered she just got a car seat Yep. So, like she was preparing for the future. Right. Right. H losing him, he was kind of almost irrelevant. Yes, he was such a part of her life, but because she had the baby, 
he was almost irrelevant. Right. You know, and at that point they had already, like you said, broken up a few times with it's like, this isn't the first rodeo where like, you're so heartbroken that you're like, you can't breathe. You know, that heartbreak where you just can't breathe, like been there, done that. But once it starts happening multiple times, it doesn't feel like it, it sucks, but it doesn't feel like that first, I can't breathe. My heart's broken and stomped on thing. You're like, Oh, here we go again with this bullshit. Like, you know what? We're going to have this fight and it's going to be fine. Whatever. Like, and I get that he probably threw digs. Like, well, my wife's about to have a baby and I can't do this anymore. And whatever the hell he said, because, you know, they had fights previous to this, but she was so adamant and having this baby and having this baby with or without his help, whether he was involved or whether he wasn't, obviously she was pushing for that to happen, but she was very clear that she was going to do it one way or another. Exactly. And she was so excited. Like, like I said, everybody who I've spoken to. There's a young woman I spoke to who um, was making, who made um, something like clothing for the baby. Yeah. And she made, I, I think it was like an announcement photo or picture portrait for yeah. Sandra. Like you don't do those things if you're just going to kill yourself. No, you don't. And it, it's, she was preparing for her future and preparing for this child. She was so excited. She would tell Anybody who would listen, how excited she was about yep. this. And she had no problem doing it. People who she hadn't talked to in a very long time, just like, hey, I'm pregnant. Isn't that yeah. awesome? Like, you know, and you don't do that if you're like, yeah, I'm so depressed. I'm going to probably commit suicide. Like, that's not, you know, exactly. doesn't make sense. You're not, you'd be that depressed. You wouldn't even bother. Like, been there, done that too. <laughs> Drag myself out of bed. You know, when I first got fibromyalgia, like, that was oh, hard. Yeah. Like, Exactly. Trust me. I, I understand what that fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. migraines and some other stuff. It's like, it's hard getting up every day, but you're going to rip yourself out of bed sometimes. And sometimes I'm totally fine. And other yeah. days it's like, God, I, I have to pull myself up by the bootstraps and just like suffer all day. Yep. And probably sometimes for weeks when you get a flare up and sometimes months, sometimes days, it never, there's not like a standard, you know, Hey, it's going to be a flare up for three days. Sometimes it's three months. So, so it's like, I I've lived in that, that yep. where you just want to end it, yep. you know, a few times. So I think that's why this part, partly why her case bothers me. Cause I hate when people are accused of killing themselves because the police don't want to conduct a proper investigation. Well, yeah, it definitely bugs me because they did a proper investigation when it came to my dad, right? Like my dad committed suicide and he hung himself. And that's partly why this bothers me so much. The other part <clears throat> is because she was abused like I was as a kid. Obviously not the same circumstances, but supposed to be somebody who's supposed to protect you and, and you're supposed to trust. So like, yeah. I know, I know firsthand exactly what she went through. And it bothers me that we have two parts of this case that, you know, personally, I've, I've been through myself. And you stick them together and you see, like, the police reports don't make sense. There's stuff that, like, no one can agree on. Then you got, he was the last person to see her life and you didn't get his DNA when you had every opportunity to do so. Why not? His brother already ratted him out. That was his baby. He says it's not. Clearly it is. Like, I don't care what he can, exactly. you wouldn't, if it wasn't, you'd give the DNA. So there's, like, no ifs, ands, or buts in my mind about that. It's clearly your baby. Like, but you guys had opportunities to maybe even get a confession out of him. If you pulled that damn DNA and you chose not to, what else are you hiding? Like, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it makes no sense. It None. makes no sense. And the system failed her. Yeah. Over and over. First place when they let these criminals be around children. Yeah. Yep. And then the system failed her again in death. Yep. And that's just and, unacceptable. And in, between, and in between because people knew knew that Farwell was seeing her. And said nothing. Did nothing. And said nothing. People knew things were going on with, you know, the his brother and Divine and and uh Heal. You know, people yep. there was I'm sure there were a lot of whispers around that police station. And who knows who else? Right. And that's the problem. Exactly. That's, and that's why a full-throated investigation needs to be conducted by an yeah. outside entity that has no ties to Matthew Morrissey or has no... Or Massachusetts for that fucking matter. Like, <laughs> at this point. And I messaged... 
I got to post what I said back to them. I messaged the uh, DOJ, like the United States DOJ. Good for you, dude. And the Boston division. And they were like, well, you know, we don't handle those kind of cases. You know, we can't, we don't, we don't, you know, we don't represent people. Like the, the way they were acting was like. I'm not asking you to represent me. She's dead. <laughs> I, I said, so I went off, like, I yeah. went off in my, my message back. That I said, mm -hmm. I am a concerned citizen coming to you saying this young woman was molested by cops. Is And I was like, and it is your job to yes. represent her. And I, I like I said, I'll it is. I, I went off. I like, I went totally off. I haven't heard back from them, but I went off. Mm -hmm. I was so livid when I got that letter back saying, well, we don't represent people. You know, you would want to get get a lawyer. I said, it's not about me. It's about her. What said, do you mean? That's 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 I'm not asking you to represent me. I'm asking you to do your job as the DOJ and look into something that clearly is corrupt and can't be looked at in an independent way here in mass by any entity. That's obvious. So that is, is your job. That's literally what you're there for. That's literally the crux of what you're supposed to fucking do. So the whole, it's not my job and we don't represent, I'm not asking you to represent me. I'm asking you to represent this young woman who died, who nobody, she has no family to speak for her. Okay. Who civil the rights hell? were violated. Right. These men right. violated her civil rights as police officers. You right. have the right to not be molested by police officers. Sure do. <laughs> do something about it. And that I went off. I would have also asked them the question of what exactly do you do then? Would you like to give me a list of the things that you do do then? Yeah. Besides push these standard notes back to people who are concerned? Because they do. Just like, oh, well, we can't help you. Go away. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's your fucking job. It's literally your job. Your so job. what, you guys only take like political cases now? That's it? You guys don't but actually do like... It's a political case. Yeah. <laughs> you have a town police department covering up a case of a young woman who was molested and yeah. who else was molested by these people right you're not gonna that's, look into that that's why you guys need to come in and do a deep dive into this this police department like maybe go through the list of the people who are in the explorers program that's what I I, that's what i said to fanning i said every student boy or girl who went through that program needs to be interviewed well i'll tell you something they seem to think that like abusers only have like a gender. No, my abuser didn't have a gender. It was both. So like maybe you want to look into that. Like maybe you want to check with those people and see if they have anything to tell you because they might not have the courage to come to you. But exactly. if you went to them, they may say something because you clearly already know. And now they're more apt to tell you like exactly. That burns me like that, that, oh my God, I got smoke coming out of my ears like that. Oh my God. <laughs> you should have seen me. You should have seen me. And I said, I showed it, showed it to her cousin. And I was like, I guess I got to write when I'm mad, more angry. Cause it was like, it was going off, but it was eloquent, like to the point. Sustained. Oh, that's how I do it. I'm like, I'm still going to say professional, but I'm going to be like a okay. little bit of a jackass, but be professional about it so that it burns even more. And I'm just like, I can imagine you doing exactly what I do. Ooh, I went off. I was, I was so <laughs> angry. And I didn't even like, normally I like proofread. I'll have somebody else proofread me for me because my punctuation is horrible. But I read it like two times after and I was like, it looks good. Send. Send. Done. Not dealing with you. Like and her, I said to her cousin, she was like, whoa. I was like, yeah, I was, I was a little bit livid. Uh, yeah. You think, I mean, I would have been too. Like, what do you mean? It's not your job. Uh, yeah. I'm not asking you to represent me. I'm asking you to represent this woman right here on the screen who exactly. is gone and her baby who is gone and have no voice. Your, that's your job to be her voice. That's your fucking job. It's what the DOJ gets paid to goddamn do. Do your fucking job. And like, that's the whole point. You're supposed to come in. When a police department has gone off the rails, right. you're supposed to come in and they've done it before in Stoughton. Yep. This isn't yeah. the first corruption case in Stoughton. Stoughton nope. had others. And you know who helped weed out the, the bad guys? Robert Devine. You know why he probably did it? Because he didn't want them looking at him. He won an award from the FBI for helping to root out the problem. Yeah, except he kept everyone who was part of the problem and rooted out the people who would rat him out, probably. Probably.
Probably. Yeah. So it's yeah. like they they've been into they knew they know about this police department. Well, you know what? It's time to come back in. Yeah, I was gonna say it's time. It's, you can't just do one investigation and say, "Well, we did that," and like you know, they're good now. No, mm-hmm. no, they're clearly not good now. Also, you want to maybe take a look next door in Canton, maybe do your job in both places. Like yep. it's saying, like you know, DA's office. There's a couple of places you need to be looking at right now. Like, and that's why I hope to God they let they the people of Canton. Please, again, if any of you live in Canton, please go to the meeting on the 20th and go vote yes to have oh, yeah. audit done because it, it, there's three cases that need to be looked at. I don't know the name of the young man who died, but there was a case that it, it was like a um, he they were looking looking for him and then he showed up on a driveway like a not too far from where they were looking at him the next day. Him, he was dead. Craig Casey. Craig Casey. That's yes. the one that I did, Craig Casey. Yeah. And, and Sam, you know where they found him on the corner of Pleasant and Meadows. And he was beat up, basically, wasn't he? It was a car accident. One person car accident. But why is someone driving by thinking they saw someone sleeping? He's, he's deceased because you guys didn't find him. And all of these tow trucks and there's people, DPW, that's not their job to find him. It's your job. And you didn't. Yeah. And he died. <laughs> like. Yeah. And these two cases, Sandra's case and the John O'Keefe case. Yeah. They all need to be looked at with a very hard looking from somewhere other than the Mass State Police and other than Canton PD and Stoughton PD. I'm sorry. I'm tired of police stations investigating themselves and being like, ah, nothing to see here. I mean, imagine if I could investigate myself. Like, oh, cool. Oh, cool. And I would have never been a drug addict if I could, you know, investigate yeah. myself. Like, oh, Elise was never a drug addict 15 years ago. Nope. Nope, nope, nothing to see here. Like, and even having the Massachusetts State Police, it's like the unit that investigated both these cases works alongside these stations. Yep. So even if they were going to investigate, when it comes to them investigating another police officer, another department of another section of the Massachusetts State Police should have come in and investigated Absolutely. these cases. Group that was way the hell out there that's got nothing to do with this general vicinity of Southeastern yep. Mass, which is usually apparently Troop D. But again, they should have been out ways. They should have done Central, like somewhere that was not not close by and affiliated with knowing any of these officers. Bottom line. Exactly. It shouldn't have been a, you know, a, a one that's going to, you know, these guys hang out together. Like, come on, dude. Like, I mean, I think that the John O'Keefe case proves that like you got ATF agents and you know what I mean? Like all these different people who grew up together and, and work different places, you know, Boston PD can be like, what, what the hell? Like, no, we can't have this clusterfuck of like people just covering for each other. And like, there's too much there. There's too much going on there. Like there has to be an outside entity to come in and say, something ain't right here. Something's got to give. We need to look at this. This is a fucking problem. Like exactly. Exactly. And it's not happening. So, well, thank you. Obviously. <laughs> thank you for having me on. And we went through everything. I think <laughs> we, we shall reconvene this another day because this is something that it needs to continue. Like the, the traction is when you continuously talk about it, like, and, and continuously talk about it because if her story doesn't make it past Massachusetts, we got a problem because this isn't Sandra's story. Isn't unique in a way where this hasn't happened before. This has happened before this just gets swept under the rug more often than people think it does. And Sandra's just kind of came to light. And there are other cases like this guaranteed that just got swept under the rug. And this is going to be for everyone who's been through something like this. And this, and Sandra was, you know, like their family member or their friend or their loved one, um, something happening in this case is going to give them a feeling of like, well, maybe then they can do something about mine. Like that's, that's, you know, the, the, the hope at least that I have is that if people keep talking about it and we keep addressing it and we keep going over it, that eventually it'll start spreading like a domino effect and people will start saying, whoa, 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 what the hell happened here? Why isn't anybody looking into it? And then we don't have just 
you know, me and you and like a couple other people like pounding the DOJ. Like we have like a lot of people knocking on the door of the DOJ and maybe even some people that got some say over there saying, whoa, 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 you need yeah. to repull yeah. this out. Like, exactly. That's exactly. what I hope. And <laughs> I hope to God, I hope to God that is why the FBI started their investigation. I, that's my theory. I don't obviously know, but my theory is this is why. I, so. I, I, I hope I, 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 I mean, I have that theory too, that it's a possibility. I hope so. I yeah. hope so. And it would be like the cherry on top if Sandra is the one who brought everybody down. Oh, it totally would. It totally would. <laughs> the girl that was forgotten. No longer forgotten. Wasn't forgotten. And I won't let her be for forgotten. No. I'll keep talking about her. I will keep going on shows like yours, talking about her because she deserves to be out there. Her case needs to be looked at many eyes need to be on this case because yeah what was done to her is hideous it's disgusting and that's why that's why we're here to do this right like so everybody if you have anything you need to tell melissa you can totally reach out on her, the facebook page she's she's the admin over there um give them your email again what's your email um the email to get you can get in touch with me about sandra's case is um justice for sandra birchmore at gmail.com um, Facebook is the easiest way to get, get to me. A lot of people message me on there. Um, but you can message me on that email address and just, if anybody has any questions or any information, 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 please come, come to me and please go follow the justice page. We just hit 4,000 members, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but we want it to go up it up it up. Yeah, of course we do. Because we, we need other people knowing about this. This is an important case. Like Exactly. So everybody thank Melissa. Yes, thank Melissa. Yes, th thank you, Melissa, for coming and, and having this conversation. And we'll do it again. Definitely. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye. Awesome, Melissa, as always. But I did have something else for you guys. And I know it's been a long stream. But I'm going to try to go over this one quickly. Because this case sort of mirrors a lot of what's happening in the Karen Reed case. And it's odd, right? Someone else actually brought this to my attention. It was a viewer that brought this to my attention. And I thank that viewer for bringing this to my attention because when I looked into it, I was like, wait the hell, what? So I want to point out some things. I don't know if you guys have heard of this case, but Lorianne Phillips, it's actually a case going on right now. The woman's on trial right now um, for hitting her husband. And they found him in a snow, but she found him in a snowbank. And she says she doesn't, you know, like doesn't think she remember or she doesn't remember like hitting him. They had a fight and the passenger side door was open and she kind of like took off and, you know, she didn't see him get hit. She didn't think that she hit him like whatever. She went to a hotel, came back at two in the morning because she had like, I don't know, they say she she booked it, but the wrong day. So she came back at two in the morning, went in the house, whatever, came back out. And it says at 6 29 AM, Sergeant Valencia was dispatched for an individual located in the snowbank next to the driveway and appeared to be deceased. Right. Um, and it was, I think the guy's name was Mark, Mark Phillips. When she found her husband dead in the snowbank, um, she told police that Mark Phillips that her and her had a heated argument hours before. What I find weird about this is that they say in the report that she was hysterical and that she couldn't do CPR, apparently because he was um, sort of frozen, kind of, to the ground. Um, sucks, but that's what happened. He was kind of frozen, you know, to the ground. And she was on the phone with 911. Obviously, she was the caller. And when they pulled up, she was sort of like, I guess, kneeling near him next to him. But when they did the autopsy, okay, and this is the difference between the John O'Keefe case and this case, where she thinks she could have possibly hit him, but she doesn't remember hitting him. Um, when they did the autopsy on Mark Phillips, okay, the man had left side and right side abrasions and all sorts of things from the neck down, actually. So it wasn't just, you know, neck up stuff. It was neck down. He had abrasions of the head and neck, contusions uh, of the left 
temporalis muscle, abrasions on the torso, abrasions of the um, inner interior left flank, multiple left side fractures with soft tissue damage and right side, but also more so on the left side than the right side, but he still had right side damage. He still had right side, you know, injuries where John didn't have any of those. So if he was hit by accident by his wife and found in this snowbank, they also say like his legs were partly covered with snow. So obviously he was laying there for a while before the wife found him. And she says in the report, like, God, I came in last night and I never even saw him, right? Never even saw him. So, I mean, that's because she's actually on trial, Lorianne Phillips, right now. I think it's like the second or third day of trial. Um, I think today will be like the third. Or, it's either the third or fourth day today will be of trial on this case. And and I looked, I was looking at it and I'm like, that's like, it. so it happened February 23rd, 2014. 23 so this year but the beginning of the year um it's just weird it was in La Crosse County Wisconsin so obviously it's not a Massachusetts case but nonetheless um she found she found she's the one who found him and she's the one who called and you know she was hysterical like I just I'm re I read I read it and I'm like this can't be let me see if I can get this up here hold on let me see here Get it up on the screen with you guys because it's important. You're totally welcome, Melissa. Thank you for coming. All right, here it is, right here. It's even some of the documents right here of Lorian Phillips. Okay. Let me get it. So yeah, it's kind of small, so you guys can't like read it or whatever. But it says the autopsy results. February 29, 2019, an autopsy. 2019. Hold on a second. They told me 2023, so I'm confused. Dear, let's scroll back up to the top here. Oh, maybe it was 2019. I don't know why I have written down 2023. So whatever, 2019, either way. I must have saw something that said 2023. All right, so this is what they say happened, right? Hit and run, resulting in death, okay? They say the above-named defendant on or about Saturday, February 23rd, 2019, at they you know redact the number county road in unalaska lacrosse county wisconsin did operate a vehicle involved in an accident that resulted in the death of mark a phillips and failed to reasonably investigate what was struck and if the operator knew or had reason to know that the accident resulted in injury or death of a person or in damage to a vehicle that is driven or attended by a person and failed to stop the vehicle she was operating as close to the scene of the accident as possible and remain at the scene of the accident until she did all the following. Give her name, address, registration number, vehicle she was operating, if available. So basically, this is just like what they're, you know, the, the count, the, the charge there is the hit and run resulting in death. Um, so it says on February 3rd. 2019 at approximately 6 29 a.m sergeant valencia from the lacrosse county sheriff's department was dispatched to whatever county road um for an individual who had been located and believed to be deceased in a snowbank it was determined mark phillips had died and was located in a snowbank alongside the driveway to his house his body was turned over to the lacrosse county medical examiner's office for further investigation Sergeant Valencia was initially provided information that a 48-year-old male, later identified as Mark Phillips, had been located in a snowbank alongside the driveway at, the number is redacted, County Road. The information was that the female caller was hysterical and she could not administer CPR to him. The nature of the call made it seem as though Mark was deceased at the time. As Sergeant Valencia neared the location, he reports that he could clearly see from some distance away what he later identified as Laurie kneeling over Mark's body. He indicates it was very apparent when approaching the location that she was outside as he could clearly see her outline standing or kneeling next to him and his body laying on the ground. As Sergeant Valencia turned into the driveway, he could see Laurie next to Mark. And as Sergeant Valencia approached, he saw a pair of sunglasses in the middle of the driveway, approximately 15 feet 
south of Mark and Laurie's location. <clears throat> he avoided the glasses, drove around them, and further up into the driveway as the first responder vehicles were pulling in behind him. As Sergeant Valencia stopped his vehicle, he could clearly see a set of footprints that looked to be coming from the house, almost reaching the detached garage to the west of the residence, and then moving down towards where Mark's body was located. It should be noted that the Holman area received a minimal snowfall in the early morning hours of February 23rd. As Sergeant Valencia approached Lori and Mark, he could see those same footprints went back towards the house and then back to Mark. Now, that means she clearly went, you know, in the house. So I guess the, I guess, I don't know. It looks like. Yeah, I, that's the thing. Um, it says vehicle hit and run resulting in death is the count that I can see. I mean, I, again, I haven't had a chance to like deep dive this one. This is just something someone brought to me earlier and I'm like looking at it and I'm like, this is kind of crazy. No, the case is different, but there's similarities as in like, you know, the found in the snow and, you know, the car and the, what, what really struck me is his injuries that John does not have. Um, yeah, no, she definitely hit him. There's no doubt that she actually hit him or something. Um, but she must have ran him over, like, whatever. But the point is, is the injuries he got and the injuries John doesn't have are what struck me, you know, when I was reading the autopsy on it. Um, but so it says, yeah, so she clearly walked up to the house when she got home. And then when she came out in the morning, she must have checked the garage for him. Then when he wasn't there, she went down and saw that his body was laying there, clearly. But it also says there was n so Sergeant Valencia observed the scene further and saw there were no footprints, tire tracks, or any other objects. There was only the sunglasses in the middle of the driveway, Mark and Lori, and the set of footprints. Okay, cool. So the set of footprints he just said are there. Nothing else is there. But again, they got some snow. Sergeant Valencia checked Mark, whose body was located against a snowbank on the east side of the driveway. The body was facing in a north-south orientation with his feet to the north and his head to the south. The sunglasses were approximately 15 feet south of his location and in the middle of the driveway. When Valencia grasped Mark's hand, he reports it felt extremely cold and his fingers were blue and he had red fluid that looked to be coming out of his nostrils. His face also appeared slightly blue whitish in color, whitish blue in color. Mark had snow on his lower legs and on his arms. He had one arm slightly crossing over his head and face. As Sergeant Valencia looked at the wider area, there appeared to be one single set of tracks coming from the house and going westerly towards the corner of the garage. From there, it turned directly south towards Mark's body. Those same footprints went back to the house and then back to Mark's body again. It looked as though those tracks were made by Lori when she discovered his body and when she went to get her cell phone. So, I mean, they even say, like, but it says here, Sergeant Valencia made contact with Lori while she was kneeling next to Mark's body. She said, oh, my God, he's 48. She acknowledged they had an argument last night and that Mark had been drinking. She said, I didn't know he was out here, though, like this. It was apparent Lori was extremely upset and emotional. Laurie acknowledged she saw Mark about 11 last night. She said again, oh my God, I did not know he was out here. She told me again they had an argument the night before and said he was coming around this truck to come and get me, so I took off. His door was still wide open, but I didn't know that he was. It just says he was, which I'm like, it clearly means he was there. I don't know. She continued with more of a rambling statement, possibly saying she did not hurt him. She did not know what happened, and she did not know how he was there. Lori advised the footprint Sergeant Valencia had noticed were hers. She said she got up, <clears throat> went to the bedroom to see if Mark was there, and he was not. So she went to the garage to see if his car was there. That's when she saw him lying in the snowbank. During this time, she was motioning with her hands again in those directions. Initially, when Lori described the door open, it seemed as though she was pointing at his man cave as a possibility of the door being open. This has since been clarified as the truck door being open and not the man cave door being open. Lori stated they have been in a relationship for about three years and she lives with the residents. She said Mark was a diabetic. She also made the statement <clears throat> after repeating Mark's name several times. I wish I knew he was there. 
She also said, my God, I came home last night and I never even saw him. Like, so clearly, you know, she must not have known she hit him. I don't know. Like, I don't know. If she didn't. They don't really say if like she was drinking or they suspect she was drinking or whatever. But the part that struck me was when they have the autopsy results down here. Um, the medical examiner, this is the medical examiner's little the assistant deputy sergeant report, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> but the autopsy part is where they say like all the injuries, right? And his injuries are clearly much, much different where he has right and left side, you know, injuries and damage. John does not. And so that kind of, here it is right here. <laughs> he had abrasions on his head and neck area, including bilateral facial abrasions, hemorrhotic nasal contents, a cerebral subdural hemorrhage, and a contusion of the left temporalis muscle. It further notes, abra notes abrasions on Mr. Phillips' torso, region to include an abrasion of the left interior left flank. There was also multiple left side rib fractures with associated soft tissue hemorrhage. An extensive left side pulmonary. I don't even know what the hell that word is. Pericamel? Per parent? I don't friggin' know. Remember a bunch of that. Lacerations with associated hemothorax. The report also notes multiple abrasions and contusions of the bilateral upper and lower limbs with the left side greater than the right. It notes injuries to his upper left deltoid, left tibioid, left tibia, right patella and a contusion of the right tibia. There was no evidence of bony fractures of lower limb abrasion pocket avulsion jacket. So I don't pockets. I don't know. They have video from like where they were a bar and grill and then the dive bar apparently. And then the hotel where she arrived and then where she's arriving at Woodman's. But again, so she did go where she said she went like, but the injuries are, you know, consistent with actually being hit by a vehicle. Like the injuries were not consistent by being hit by a vehicle with John. So that's kind of where it was like, okay, this right here can show you that, you know, that that's kind of what it looks like when you get hit by a car. Like you would have more, you know, damage. You would have more, you know, left and right side abrasions or whatever. Like clearly, that didn't happen here in John's case. Like, also, I just thought that was a little good tidbit there. D yeah, the DNA was on the undercarriage. Bumper injuries. Must have been the bumper. Then they have, again, I haven't been able to deep dive into it. But what I did find was interesting because there was... You know, I do have the, the, this, uh, Karen Reed documents here. I don't know if the defense knows about this case. That would be interesting to know, Mizzy. I don't know. That's a good, that's a good. So there's three documents. Um, uh, I don't know if anybody's gone over. I'm sure they have, but there's three documents that are recent in the Karen Reed case. They're very small documents. They're not huge. You know, there's not a ton there, but there's an affidavit from one of the experts they're going to use um, for the hair. And then there's some discovery stuff. So I figured we can go over that real quick and then I can, and then I can actually go to bed. <laughs> but if you guys want to support me and my channel, there's a ticker at the bottom. There's a cash app and a Venmo at the bottom and a PayPal right there at the bottom. That's how we uh, that's how we do these shows. So that's a. I really do wonder if the defense knows about that. That that's that's a good freaking point. All right. So this one is the. Let's see if I can make it bigger for you guys for a second without like pushing it off the screen too much. Sometimes if I make it too big, you can't see it, and then it's a problem. Let's see here. Come on. Affidavit of Eric Schiff says eric schiff declare under penalty of perjury the following is true and correct my name is eric schiff 
I am over the age of 18 and fully competent to provide this affidavit. I am currently employed as a casework supervisor for Bode Technology in Lorton, Virginia. I possess a bachelor's degree from Virginia Polytech Institute and State University in Biological Sciences. I began working at Bode in 2015 and been qualified as a forensic biology analyst since 2016 and as a DNA analyst since 2017. Bode Technology is a private ANAB accredited forensic DNA lab and regularly performs DNA testing and serological screening of evidence from numerous law enforcement agencies, prosecutors' offices, crime laboratories, innocence projects, and public defenders' offices across the country. The accreditation is based on an ISO, IEC, you know, numbers, standards, and the FBI quality assurance standards for forensic DNA testing and DNA databasing laboratories. It says three. Bode Technology is accredited to perform the microscopic examination of apparent hairs and or fibers to determine their suitability for DNA testing. To properly perform the microscopic examination, the apparent hair or fiber must be long enough to properly handle and mount onto a microscope, microscope slide. An apparent hair or fiber is examined for particular characteristics, such as the pigmentation, cuticle, medulla, hair shaft shape, the presence or absence of a root end, the growth phase of the root end, and the amount of follicular, I hate this word, follicular, <laughs> as in like hair follicles, material, skin tissue present. These characteristics allow a determination to be made as to whether the sample in question is an apparent human hair, an apparent non-human hair, or an apparent fiber. If the evidence is determined to be an apparent human hair, it is then stated to be suitable for further DNA testing. The process Bode Technology employs for microscopic hair examination involves mounting the apparent hair or fiber on a glass slide with sterile water and a cover slip. This slide is then viewed by a qualified analyst using a Nikon compound light microscope at 100 times and or 200 times magnification under a bright field illumination. Bode Technology is willing to perform this examination for a case, you know, and then it's the case number. As requested by ADA Adam Lally of the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office. And then it's just, you know, Eric Schiff, notarized, blah, 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 blah. I don't know why it came out like that. So probably because I put it in a, a Google Doc instead of, you know, the regular doc it was in. So you guys could possibly see it better. But, yeah, they, sh they could show this case in order to show differences. Yeah, they absolutely could. They're 100% right. I mean, you would think they'd be aware of it, but you never know. Weirder things have happened. Weirder things have happened. You know, weirder things have happened. The other one is, let's see. It's discovery. So Commonwealth versus Karen Reed, Norfolk County Superior Court. Now comes the Commonwealth in the above captioned matter and indicates that of this date, the following discovery and materials have been provided to the defendant through defense counsel. A copy of the Massachusetts State Police Crime Laboratory DNA testing report, five pages. A copy of Massachusetts State Police Crime Laboratory DNA testing report, four pages. That's just basically a notice of discovery. Um, Adam Lally, blah, blah, blah. District Attorney, Shaman Road, Canton. Respectfully submitted for the Commonwealth. Michael Morrissey, District Attorney. Cool. So that's just a short, quick discovery motion that they had. Our discovery, you know, the Commonwealth's notice of discovery. I don't want to say motion, but. And here's another one. Commonwealth versus Ken Reed. Commonwealth's notion of discovery. 28. <laughs> 28. <laughs> 28 notice. Okay. Now comes the Commonwealth in the above captioned matter and indicate that of this date, the following discovery and materials have been provided to the defendant through defense counsel. Copy of forensic examination report of Ian Whiffen, senior digital, digital intelligence expert, Celebrite, 12 pages. <clears throat> Copy of curriculum by of Ian Whiffen, 7 pages. Copy of Massachusetts State Police Crime Lab, trace analysis report, 2 pages. Copy of Massachusetts State Police Crime Laboratory DNA Testing Report 5, case 10 pages. Copy of Massachusetts State Police Report case number, blah, 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 report number 82, 3 pages. 
And again, it's just, you know, for the Commonwealth, Michael Morrissey, Adam Lally, blah, 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 blah. Quick, like I said, small, but still relevant because they are going to keep filing um, or at least releasing these, you know, with the things that they continue to give the defense and that the defense gives them. Um, and they're going to list them all. And so, but I, I, you can list them. I, I want to see the documents. <laughs> like, I want to see the, you know, five pages of this and the three pages of that. And, you know, the 12 pages of the Celebrite. I want to, I would like to see that. I would like to see that. Because again, Adam Lally had to go like, you know, shopping to find someone to actually do like the work that like Trooper Carino couldn't do. Like that, that's a problem. Like a very, very big problem. Like, <laughs> But nonetheless, it's important to point out when they do come out that way, we can go over them. I'm glad that I had them and they were just real quick ones that I could go over. Um, but this, you know, was mostly about Sandra. Like this, this stream was mostly about Sandra because it's important that we talk about it so that other people will talk about it so that we can get the word out. And so maybe somebody takes a better look at this case. If somebody somewhere sees it, who's in the DOJ or, you know, has some pull strings somewhere that they can say, you know what, this case does not need another look like. Then, I mean, it'd be interesting to know if Yanetti and Jackson actually do know about this Lori and Phillips was, I'm sure they do. Um, case you should keep an eye on it. I think it's on, uh, I want to say law and crime. They're doing the trial. You can find it on YouTube, but I think it's on law and crime is the one that's doing the trial for that. So I'll be watching that tomorrow and keeping an eye on it. Cause I'm, I'm kind of intrigued now to see what comes out there. But again, the injuries to Mark Phillips and the injuries that John O'Keefe had completely different. He, you know, Mark Phillips had, contusions and stuff everywhere left and right side rib fractures all sorts of stuff like that john didn't have that didn't have any of it and that's what makes it suspicious to me like i you can't tell me that a car as big as a lexus 570 didn't give him any lower body and as big as john was any lower body you know contusions or abrasions or crack ribs or any nothing like not the broken leg, like nothing, nothing at all. That speaks volumes to me. But, you know, we'll find out at trial what they think. Cause it's just gonna be a battle of experts at this point. It's we're gonna hear from the defense's experts and we're gonna hear from the prosecution's experts. My problem is is I can't trust anything that comes out of the goddamn prosecutor's office anymore because they've lied about so many things and been caught in them. Like you let someone test this hair that was not qualified to test it. That right there irks me to the very core. Maureen Hartnett failed her proficiency exam for that. Problem? Yes. 100%. Definitely. That's an issue for me. 100% issue. But I suggest you guys look into that one yourselves too. It's a good one to do a little dive on. Um, I had, you know, just a couple hours to do it earlier and you know, there's a ton more documents in this case, and I haven't watched any of the trial yet, but from what I could pull, it was interesting to see that, like, his injuries were very, very different than John's injuries. So, and when I get any more documents, you guys will be the first people to know, 100%. But, uh, I'm tired now, and I'm going to eat, because I haven't even eaten dinner yet. So, I'm going to eat, and then I'm going to go to bed. Um, but I love your stinking faces and I'll see you guys tomorrow. And if you're one of my replay people, yeah, I don't know why they keep using non-experts as experts. It, it doesn't make any sense. It literally drives me bananas. Absolute freaking bananas. Like, cool. You guys keep doing that over there. Like, but if you're one of my replay people, you can also make sure that you, you know, like subscribe at the, uh, notification bell when we're on tomorrow and you can support the channel venmo cash app paypal all the stuff at the bottom of the screen just scrolling by um and i will see you guys tomorrow night at 9 30 right i love your faces of course anytime anytime melissa anytime 
we will reconvene Sandra again soon. Bye.